A mix of everything you love about today, and we do it in 30 minutes. So as Savannah was saying, first, do you feel in the heat? Mm. Millions from the Midwest all the way here to the Northeast sweating through a record-setting heat wave. Al's going to have the forecast, and also will let us know when there can be some relief. Yeah, he's doing it in a seersucker suit, too, mm -hmm. so you know it's hot. Yeah. And then did you hear Harry and Meghan have announced the birth of their daughter, mm. Lilibet Diana? Beautiful. Love the sound of that. We'll tell you the significance of the name and share the reaction from the rest of the royal family. Plus, she's going to be embarrassed, but I don't care. A special day. This girl is marking 10 years behind this anchor desk, and we're going to celebrate. We're calling it a Savannahversary, and she hates that we <laughs> no. do that. But too bad. <laughs> Let's just get to all of it. All right. Today, Today in 30. 30. This morning, 17 million people across the Northeast and Northern Plains are under heat advisories. Al is standing by. He's got the forecast. But first, let's get to NBC's Kathy Park. She's already feeling the heat up early in Boston. Kathy, good morning. <laughs> Savannah, good morning to you. The average time this time of year in Boston is 73 degrees. We're already at 74 and with temperatures expected to soar later on this afternoon, several schools here in the Northeast are planning to close early. Across the country, a pre summer heat wave scorching folks from the Midwest to the Northeast. For some, the record setting temperatures climbing too fast too soon. I'd say this is more like July 4th. And yeah. <laughs> We're about a month early. The intense heat and humidity baking Boston for at least four days, going from uncomfortable to dangerous. The mayor declaring a heat emergency and opening cooling centers. In New York, temperatures in Central Park hit 90 degrees for the first time this year. And in anticipation of the high heat today, schools in Connecticut and Massachusetts are closing early. In Minnesota, where some spots flirted with triple digits this weekend, energy experts offering tips to help keep electric bills from climbing. If you've got appliances, the dishwasher, washing machine, dryer, only run them with full loads and run them at night when that heat has dissipated. And more extreme weather out west. A drought is worsening in Utah, where residents are trying to conserve water by turning off sprinklers at least once a week, taking shorter showers and fixing leaky faucets. Back east, a preview of summer with millions sweltering in historic highs, but some still seeing the bright side after the long pandemic lockdown. Just being outside without masks right now is fantastic, so which is great. And here in Boston, we might be nearing a record high of 97 degrees, which was set back in 1999. The heat emergency lasts through Tuesday. And while those cooling centers are open to the public, city run outdoor pools are not yet open for the season, which might be another good reason to keep eating that ice cream, Savannah. <laughs> Definitely a hot, hot day. Kathy, thank you. And as we mentioned, the heat will be sticking around for a little bit. Al's got the details on this. Hey, Al, morning. Hey, guys, good morning. And you know, summer starts June 20th on a Sunday. But in the meantime, we are already feeling the heat. Through Thursday, they've got those heat advisories up. We've got 18 million people impacted by them. Here in the Northeast, we're looking at more of the same. And in fact, the summer feeling today going to be a rough one. It's going to feel like 96 in Boston, same in Philadelphia, 95 in D.C. Cleveland, you're going to feel like 85 degrees today. Minneapolis will feel like 96. And for tomorrow, we are looking at that heat continuing, feeling like 92, or it is 92 in Rapid City. Tomorrow it will be 93 in Minneapolis, 87 in Detroit. New York City feeling like 92 degrees. And as we go later this week, look at these temperatures. We do cool down a bit. Boston by Friday, you're at 69 degrees, so not so bad, but mid-80s continue in Cleveland, Chicago, 90s up into St. Paul and on into Omaha. Stick around because there's much more coming up on Today in 30. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. 
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Now to that happy news for the royal family. Harry and Meghan announcing the birth of their second child. It's a girl, Lilibet Diana, but they'll be calling her Lily for short. Her arrival here in the United States, historic and of course, well, usually there's nothing like a baby to bring a family together. NBC's Aaron McLaughlin is in Santa Barbara, California with more. Hey, Aaron, good morning. Hey, Hoda, good morning. Baby Lily was born at this hospital in Santa Barbara, the first high-profile British royal baby to be born in the United States. And while we've yet to see a photo, the Sussexes have released a statement saying both mom and baby are healthy and well, resting in Montecito, adding the baby Lily was named after both her great-grandmother, the queen, and her late grandmother, Princess Diana. This morning, a new addition to the Sussex family. A baby girl named Lilibet Diana Mountbatten Windsor, or Lily for short, joining two-year-old big brother Archie. Meghan and Harry making the surprise announcement Sunday, saying Lily was born Friday morning, weighing 7 pounds 11 ounces, at this hospital in Santa Barbara near the couple's California home. Far away from Windsor Castle, where baby Archie was first introduced to the Queen and the world in 2019. The couple saying in a statement about their new baby girl, she is more than we could have ever imagined. Baby Lily now expected to be eighth in line to the throne. Her first name honoring her great grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, whose family nickname is Lilibet. Her middle name a tribute to her beloved late grandmother, Princess Diana. The royal family releasing a short joint statement saying they're delighted. Prince Charles and Camilla, as well as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, also sending their congratulations. We know there has been a rift within this family. Can the naming of, of Lily be seen as an olive branch of sorts? Whether it's an olive branch, I think it's also about the couple wanting to perhaps remind the world that they still have these very strong royal ties. The Sussex's relationship with the rest of the royal family strained since the couple stepped back as senior royals early last year. In March, Meghan and Harry sat down with Oprah, Meghan accusing members of the royal family of neglecting her mental health and of racism before the birth of baby Archie. Concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? About how dark your baby is going to be? Potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Ooh. There were hopes the rift had begun to heal with the death of Prince Philip in April. Prince Harry and William seen chatting outside the funeral service. But more recently on his new Apple TV April Plus documentary, back, The Me You Can't See, Prince Harry once English. again speaking out, this time about his own My upbringing. Used to say to me when I was younger, she used to say to both William and I, well, it was like that for me, so it's going to be like that for you. That doesn't make sense. Just because you suffered, that doesn't mean that your kids have to suffer. The couple's move to Montecito, ensuring baby Archie and Lily will have a very different childhood. Harry telling Oprah back in March, now their family is complete. Amazing, But to have a boy and then a girl, I mean, what more can you ask for? But now we've got our family. In lieu of gifts, Meghan and Harry are asking everyone to donate to a list of charities benefiting women and children. As for when the royal family might get to meet baby Lily, well, we don't know just yet. We do know that Prince Harry is expected in the UK next month for the unveiling of a statue in tribute to his late mother, Princess Diana. But it's unclear if Meghan and the kids will accompany him. Hoda. All right, Erin McLaughlin. Erin, thank you. Stick around because there is much more coming up on Today in 30. Right now on NBC News Now.
They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. We're going to do our part and get vaccinated live. A very special naturalization ceremony. This is a really inspiring group. Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. It is a milestone morning here. Savannah's 10th anniversary <laughs> at today, or as we've dubbed it, it's her Savannah anniversary. It was 10 years ago this week, Savannah, that you officially joined the Today Show family. We saw Al welcoming you in, and Savannah has been our North Star. She has guided us through everything from breaking news to the Olympics, to royal weddings. That's right, from tragedies to triumphs and everything in between, providing us and the world with a front row seat to history. And today, we want to celebrate your incredible legacy. <laughs> so many groundbreaking interviews and memorable moments. So Savannah, brace yourself. <laughs> Drop down the tissue. We oh, dug boy. into the archives for a special look back. I can't believe it's been 10 years. I feel so much gratitude. It's an anniversary. I just like saying it. 10? I want to see day one for proof. We are so glad you've left the confines of the White House for you to become an official co-anchor. Stand by, here we go. Four. I remember thinking, you know, she's got this pal next door. She's us. Live from Studio 1A. I knew I'd like her but I didn't know I'd love her. Savannah Guthrie. It's yeah. an honor to be here. We how much she's done in 10 years, all the way around. Good morning, breaking over. I feel real lucky to be working with her. I just looked at her, I was like, I love you. She looks at me, she goes, I love you too. And that was it. Let's go. No one covers breaking news like she does. Breaking overnight. Top stories get right to this breaking news. It's hard to put it into words just how full of grief and sadness this community is. And this is a morning that will be recorded mm -hmm. in the history books. This is just one of many stores broken into, looted. When I got here and those moments happened on our air, I remember feeling that responsibility. Breaking news out of Boston, here is what we know right now. I think I was uh, on the air that day for more than seven hours. She does it like no one else. It's a sight to behold. We're here at the Place de la République. There is this feeling of resilience. This is your home, your house of worship. It's my home and it's been desecrated. I know there's so much anxiety out there. We're gonna try to walk everybody through what's going on this morning. Watching her cover like the elections. The Obama triumphs, Midwest is key, political divide remains. 2016, she was nine months pregnant with Char Char. The voters have spoken. The 45th president of the United States, Joe Biden, has been elected president. I'm Costello, appreciate it. 
here we've got breaking news and it's good news literally they just told me in my ear it's a boy get you more information as soon as it comes through my ear i'm just gonna blurt it out I would contend that she's mastered the political interview. The criticism that I hear a lot, that you are sometimes slow to react. Are you the leader of the opposition in exile in the Republican Party? People underestimate Savannah, and they do so at their own peril. I mean, do you get how bad it looks? I have the transcript of the call. Do you think this was a perfect call? She's direct, she's honest, she wants a straight answer. Have You're... you known that he is a liar, as you say? Well, absolutely. He Why tells... did you work for him? Savannah, slow down. It's like a master class. Were you a coward? No. That's what they called you. She's like the Swiss army knife of the peacock. She can do presidential town halls. That was a retweet. People can decide for themselves. I don't, themselves. I don't the take president. a position. You're not like someone's crazy uncle. You are going to answer her question. What's the holdup? What's the bottleneck? And what's being done about it? Is it yeah, it's like watching her with Liddy Dole and Bob Dole. You're family to us. You really are. <laughs> what would you say now about your motto, hope? wins out. People gravitate to her. I've met so many people that touch me because they have the courage to speak. I still expect Kayla to come through the door. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm sorry. It's overwhelming when yeah. you There have been many, many stories like that that stay with me. What did it feel like to fly? You are a survivor with a capital S. Do you feel like she may have saved your life in that moment? Absolutely. Who do you choose to share that story with? You choose somewhere where you feel totally and completely loved and safe. And they chose Savannah. You see in her eyes her compassion. Weren't you just a young woman who wanted to just not have to be sick? Can't be easy to talk about. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't pray for the opportunity to go back to that day. You see a mother who can't even imagine that grief. It's more than a story. They are in her phone, they are on her heart. Can you tell me what this yeah. business means to you? Sorry, I'm getting a little choked up. Uh -oh. Okay. He would have been so <laughs> proud of you, Lily. <laughs> I'm glad you guys could all get together. <laughs> Hugs are back. <laughs> well, it's really, really hard to be both credible and really cool. And Savannah can do both at the drop of a hat. She sings, she dances, she's a mom. Her skin glows so much it can be seen from space. <laughs> yes. I was so impressed by you. Oh, that's awesome, thank you. I'm a huge Savannah Guthrie fan, so. Oh. <laughs> you watch her with Tom Hanks. We're on the Savannah <laughs> channel. It's a love fest. No, that is not a good answer. Savannah Guthrie, there we go. Mm -hmm. Come out and make sure that yeah. There's just nothing like sharing the spotlight with your sisters and your mom. Oh, I, I can so relate to that. Everything good that has happened to me happened right here. Oh yeah. my God, there he is yes. again. Yes. Hey. Yes. Baby Bill. There you go. Hey, Charlie. One of the things that I enjoy watching her being as a mom. Hi, Bill. Hey, Charlie, blow kiss. What? We got to see Vale and Charlie's hey little beautiful faces peek in. With Charlie. They've multiplied, guys. <laughs> Hi. When any of Savannah's friends have a problem, she's the first person they go to. They know that their heart can rest there. I lost my mom tragically. One of the first phone calls I got was from Savannah, who said, what do you need? My brother had just died. The kind, generous spirit. That's who she is when the little red light on the camera goes off. We are expecting a baby girl. Oh. When she finds out all that you did for her to bring her into this world, both of you, you're wonderful. You. During the pandemic, we were doing the Today Show remotely. I'm in my basement right now. And it wasn't until we all gathered in that backyard. It's so good to see your beautiful faces. We realized how much of a family we are. We recognize what's so precious. Yes. And what's precious is people. Mommy's had the same job for 10 years. Wow. 
No one takes the work more seriously, but she doesn't take herself too seriously. I don't know how to skate. Oh. Still in your PJs? Me too. Good morning. One, two, three, lay out there! You vaccinated people. She's got such a quick wit. Well, I don't have to fit in a wedding dress tomorrow. Why not? She's always willing to play. Ready to perform. Stop like, I have some thoughts. <laughs> I'm serious. I'll go to her right now. Super cool. If she's going to do something, she's all in. I mean, did you see her performance in Wicked? What's really fun is to watch her inner fangirl come out, because it comes out a lot. Hello. Hello, hello. Is it me you're looking for? I love Shakira. Oh. And my lips don't lie. You're my kind of woman. <laughs> Over the years, I think I've gotten to meet all of my crushes. Colin Firth, I love you. Some people are calling this, George, your return to TV. You mean this right now with you? Yes, oh. us, right this here. Is... Okay, I'm flustered. Jolene, Jolene. Roger Federer came on the show. Can I call you Raj? Sure you can. Well, her love affair with Roger Federer is embarrassing, okay? I'm on camera number one. Oh I my present, God. <laughs> I present the Raj. This whole Roger Federer obsession. I mean, it's pretty crazy. When I realized that I was gonna be playing against Roger. Ah! Yeah! I've gotten to travel the world. Like, uh, uh. That is a North Korean guard post. We have a lot of people up with us this morning. Uh, wow. A really special day. We are here at the White House. You might run into a senior administration official or perhaps the Vice President of the United States. Let the games begin. I think Savannah is one of the biggest boosters of the Olympics and especially of the female athletes. You know what's better than a gold medal? 23 gold <laughs> medals. I got to visit the Holy Land and see it in a way I would have never dreamed possible. I know how much that meant to her, to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. As a person of faith, I don't think there's a story that meant more to me. Prayers are joined. They are. Rise up. I think about this place as where all my dreams came true. Happy 10th anniversary. I hope you had a great decade years of work. Congratulations, dear Savannah, on 10 years. I can't imagine life without you. You are not only our friend, you are the pillar of our NBC work family. We love you. We are so proud of you. Happy Savannahversary. You are so darn good at what you do. And off the air, you're also a beautiful friend. Thank you for being our North Star. We love you. Happy anniversary, Savannah. You haven't changed a bit. We love you so much. Here's the 10 more. Congratulations, Savannah. We love you. Mwah. Savannah Guthrie, you know I love you. Congratulations on 10 years. Right now on NBC News Now, They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of violence and persecution in their home countries. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. NBC News now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there of uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Roll. Action! 
Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Happy 10th anniversary, Mommy. We love you. Okay, you may know that by now we're <laughs> celebrating Savannah, who's marking 10 years as part of the Today Show family. All right, so we're going to get this party started. Savannah Guthrie, please come join us. <laughs> oh, I get to make an entrance. Yes. I do the thing I do where I pretend to go down the stairs <laughs> behind her flashlight every day. Yes. Hi. Hi. Are, are you, you're so over it. I know. We're so I'm a, over I know. It. We it's, are so not over it. By the way, I, there are so many great highlights to get to, but I have to say the best one happened just at the end of the eight. Yes. Oh. Could you? have died. I mean, we've been celebrating Savannah. I don't even know if we have the clip ready, but when you're... Oh, oh, my people. (laughs) And were you shocked? I was because it's of all the COVID rules and everything, you know, it's like I didn't think they'd let the kids come on, but, you know, my my husband's vaccinated, of course, but the kids had their little masks. But look how Vail is, like, not letting you go. go. I just was so happy to see my little people, and oh. it's just the whole thing was lovely. <laughs> I know, but it's like it's over now. No, it's okay. not. Okay. Yeah. Here, we're not going to let it in until we <laughs> leave right I now. I love when you said all the best things in your life have happened on this show. It's true. The last ten years on this show, it's like the best friends, mm-hmm. my whole family. You know, my whole family, every professional dream mm-hmm. I ever had, or even didn't even dare to have came true here you know it's like it's just too much it's like you know people they kept asking me like what is there a pinch yourself moment I'm like yeah every day I wake up (laughs) is a pinch myself every single morning I walk in I pinch myself because this is a dream it's a dream I mean the fact that all of this happened in this last decade it's crazy it's just beyond and you know you posted this hilarious (laughs) throwback of yourself which was like the most unflattering picture that's what I how long have I been telling you you but, don't care. Well, That's what I love. she doesn't care, but she you know, posted this picture what? of her as a little girl, and she just oh. said, nobody would have ever thought <gasps> that this little girl would host the Today Show. No oh. way. Yeah, Well, the, and especially that little girl. Like, I would have never thought. I would have never dreamed that I could do something like this. I mean, mm. but I know, I'm like in on the joke. I know it's such a, it's just a total blessing. It's a, mm. just like, I feel God is like rained down mm. blessings on me, and I don't know why, but I, I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. This whole thing has been so... So sweet. Mm-hmm. I mean, to do to have everyone say such wonderful things and to get to kind of like it's like attending your memorial service, but you, <laughs> but you don't have to be dead. Well, you get we, to be alive for can it. Can we show you your eulogy? This. Oh, yes. oh, can boy. we show you um, yeah. the best side of Savannah that as you've been part of this show? Take a look. Three, two, one. Hi guys. I'm just doing my part, Jenna. It it's just a little ice cream with pancake. Mm. Walk okay, down gotta, with. Oh my gosh, thank so you fun. for that show today. Did you, you notice during, during your concert this morning two really dorky <laughs> super fans <laughs> trying to dance to Who were mom dancing? <laughs> Crank it oh. up! There you go! Twinkle little star. You want to give them a little spank? Okay. That's the meaning of just spank them. That was unexpected. Topic number one pimple update. I don't think anyone will ever know that I've had a face blemish. You have been better. A very attractive man. Thank you so much. I'm going to write you a love letter. Oh, put it in the mail, girl. I'll be checking my mailbox. (laughs) Mimosa day. I know. What is all that? A lot of drinking. I'm always... I hated when you guys stopped drinking so much. No, I went some of them. Devolve into this. Hi, and I'm huge. Love you, Mama. Well, I love you more than more work than friends. work friends. Okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Here's to ten more. Oh my. <laughs> Be sure to join us tomorrow on today. Uh, Susie Orman will be here to help us get it right financially. Yeah, to get financially fit. <laughs> Whatever, yeah. Exactly. Yes, okay, plus we're going to reveal our new Today All Day lineup. That's for you. You're the Today All Day viewer, so you don't want to miss this. This is all about you. This is such, we're celebrating and there's something great in this cup. Oh my God. I wish y'all would know it. No, none for you. Is we'll that- see you tomorrow right here on Today. Tequila? Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Hi today all day. Hope you're ready for some laughs. Coming up, we put your favorite celebrities to the test as they take on the six minute marathon. Plus, we've got some of my personal favorite sit down interviews from the last few months. So get excited as today all day continues right now. Padma Lakshmi, thank you for being here on the Six Minute Marathon. My pleasure. First question, if you could only listen to one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? D'Angelo, Voodoo. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> All right, what is the strangest gift you've ever received? Somebody gave me a tooth once. A to did you, I'm sorry, did you say a tooth? Okay, there's so many follow-up questions, we may have to spend the whole six minutes on this. <laughs> what? Why? Whose tooth? It was just this guy. He was odd, but he was very artistic. He, um, I think he was playing ball or something, and he either fell or was in the midst of a game, and it, he broke his tooth, and he was like, I saved it for you. And was... So it was an adult tooth. That was my next question. I think it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Where's the tooth now? I don't know. See, I don't I think questions. I don't think it made it like back from college, if you know what I mean. You know, yeah. I think I was just like, this is too weird. Have you ever been mistaken for another celebrity? And if so, who? Yes, when I was 14 and in the mall, which I thought of as a huge compliment, Apollonia. Remember Apollonia? Apollonia? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I was a teenager, like I said, um, Gal Gadot. I've also gotten mistaken for, um, let me see, in the early days when I had a perm in high school, um, uh, Irene Cara, but also, so it has just happened recently, but recently it was just Gal Gadot and the New Yorker magazine of all people. I've always dreamed of having my name in the New Yorker, of course, as a writer. They put a picture of me because I chose a cartoon for them. And then they wrote that it was Priyanka Chopra. I'm like, I know all us Indian women look alike, but really? <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's like, that's a, that's a pretty, like, pretty epic row of like beautiful ladies to be compared to. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all nice and flattering. Yeah. Oh, that's good. What is your guilty pleasure? I feel no guilt in taking pleasure in life. So I don't feel guilty about anything that gives me pleasure. Like, I think I'm a 50 year old woman. I deserve all the pleasure I can get from now until I die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you could be friends with a movie or TV character, who would it be? Um. Well, it's not a character, it's a real person. Um, I would love to be friends with Brianna. Yeah. I just think she'd be so much fun if she let me hang out with her. But, um, and I've never met her and I don't think I want to in a way. I'd hang out with her, but if I just had to meet her, I just think it would burst my bubble. But um, all of my characters are real life characters. Mahabra Ali, Dorothy Parker, Lenny Bruce, Cleopatra, you know. That'd be a good dinner party for you to right? host. Yeah, definitely. What was your least favorite food as a child? Eggplant. <laughs> Do you like it now? I mean, I love it now. I love eggplant. Who have you been starstruck meeting? Mother Teresa. I met her. I got to spend the day with her in the 90s. Um, I cut a ribbon at the World Cup of Cricket that was happening in Calcutta. And um, a group of people said, we're going, would you like to join? I literally tagged along, but she was mesmerizing. She was so comforting and charismatic. And you know how you feel when you're like a little kid in the safety and comfort of your mom's arms, all is well within the world. That's how you feel in her presence, at least I did. Do you have a personal mantra? And if so, what is it? It is, um, everything is a benefit if you look at it the right way. Even the most difficult things that have happened to me, I have tried to focus on what I can gain from them or what uh, what is the bright side? What can I gain, you know, what can, what can I get out of this? You know, even um, endometriosis, which was very painful and I went through for over 20 years, I like to look at that experience as what gave me the fuel to start the foundation with my surgeon. And so I think it must have been, you know, destined for me to go through that 
Um, Cause otherwise the pain doesn't make sense. It's so unnecessary. So that I could turn that pain into power. What did you want to be when you grew up? I, the, my first job that I ever dreamed of being was an airline stewardess. An airline, a flight attendant. We used to call, you know. We I'm call them old. stewardesses, I know. We're the same yes. age. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. So I just thought they were the most glamorous people on earth. You know, I flew as an unaccompanied minor when I was four to America from India. And they just, I was on Air India Airlines. They had these beautiful printed silk saris. It was the early 70s, it was beautiful bouffant hair lots of eyeliner and lashes. You know, they were just like walk up and down those aisles with their saris fluttering, you know, behind them. I just thought they have so much freedom. They get to travel all over the world. And that's what I want to do. What do you think you are much better at than you actually are? Oh, I think I'm a better skater. I always think, oh, today is the day that I'm going to seamlessly skate forwards and then backwards. Do you roller skate a lot? Yes, get a pair of roller skates. It's so fun. Do you remember doing it when you were little? Yes, I, we used to go to skate country, go around the ring. Yes, get, I could never skate, skate backwards, but I tried. No, you have to. I will go skate. I'll meet you wherever you want. I know all the flat parts of the city where there's not a lot of traffic. Do not try and skate in Central Park. All right, last question. This is an easy one. What is your favorite reality show? Top Chef. Thank you, Padma Lakshmi. So great to talk to you. This was fun. Nice to talk to you too. Be a drink. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Our across America journey here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Do you sing in the shower? Yes. I like these romantic songs that are called boleros, and there's millions of them, and they're very melodramatic and romantic. So you're in the shower, and you're singing. Are you a good singer? I can belt it in the shower. <laughs> And it's got good acoustic, so it's okay. I have a shower that only has like one string of water, not like lots of it. Oh, like a hose? And I kind of sing and dance because I put it in my shoulder. It's like the whole party in there, you know? I move, I'm laying down. My husband thinks I'm crazy. Did anyone tell you what this is all about? They told me you're gonna ask me random questions and I answered the first thing that comes in my head. That is the six minute marathon. Let's do it. Let's start that clock. Okay, first question. What is the best compliment you've ever received? I think you're a good mother. Hmm. What is your biggest pet peeve? Like something you don't like? Yeah, something irritating. Oh, the, the noise in the light or, you know, noises that nobody else hears and that drive me crazy. They're everywhere. What about now? Now, no. no not so bad in my house, at least. <laughs> Which co-star over the years made you laugh the most on set? I gotta say, I laughed a lot with Owen. Maybe there's somebody else. I mean, I've had some good ones. Hey, Tiffany Haddish. Ugh. How funny is she? How do you unplug? I meditate. 
I can meditate for one minute or I can meditate straight two and a half hours, no problem. Wow. All right, what is the most recent show you've binge watched? I, I just discovered the Chicago PD, Chicago Fire. I'm in a Chicago face right now. <laughs> hey, those are all on NBC. You want to watch something that has many episodes because we're in lockdown. So the, my whole family were in the Chicago thing. What movies of your own do you rewatch? I don't rewatch them, but I, I, I really want to rewatch Frida. It's been a long time. Oh, well, that would mean a lot. You know, I watch a Fool's Roshin a couple of times because it just comes up on the, te- on the TV a lot. And me, I forget it's me. I get, I get into the films. That's how much I like films. <laughs> oh, but if it's bad, if it's bad, I'm watching everything. Even like, oh my God, that wig. Oh my God. And my husband hates it because I ruin it for him. But you don't turn it off. You just hate on it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they call that hate watching. <laughs> I do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> when was the last time you told a lie? Probably every day, but uh, today I'm clear. I'm in the clear for today. You know what? I'm not, I'm not much of a liar, but I am Mexican, so I like to embellish. It's just making a good story better. Probably the last time I lied, not too long ago, probably I lied yesterday about my weight to my husband. I feel all lies about weight should be accepted. There should just I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. It's kind of like embellishing in the other direction. I also think lies about your drinking. That could also be okay. Yeah, I, I like you. I think we can be good <laughs> friends, you and I. <laughs> we could have fun. Okay, if you could be any age for a week, what age would you be? I'm excited about my age. I'm not too, I don't lie about my age, for example. We don't have to, because as far as I can tell, you're ageless or possibly reverse aging. I, I'm, I'm liking you more and more by the minute. <laughs> but I like my numbers. I like being 54. Yeah. It's an accomplishment. I feel the same way. I love my age. I'm 49. I'm all for it. I love middle age. But you know what? I hated when I turned 30. Oh my God, I had a crisis. I know because I think when you're young, you can't imagine not being described as young. But once you're over it and you get used to it, yeah. who cares? <laughs> What's an experience you would like to relive? Uh, meeting my husband. Mm. I would, oh, that was so romantic. Um, I would I would love to relive some of the time with my child when she was younger and she used to call me all, all the time. Oh, baby snuggles, puppy snuggles. Oh yeah, my dogs that have passed away. I've had so many dogs in my lifetime. You know, I would like to relive the times with the people, my grandmother, with the people and the animals that are no longer with me. If I really had a genie and I had a choice, I think that's, that's a big one. All right, here's a turn. What is your favorite way to exercise? I like yoga, but I invented an exercise that uh, it's like five minutes and it works my entire body. I have invented like one little routine that it's very weird and uh, it's, it's, it, it's kind of working. What, what is that? Can you tell us? Can you share that? I can't. I, I would have to get up and, 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 and show you. But it really, like, you're sore the next day. And when you're doing it, you don't feel it because I use inertia to do it. This is a whole other show we need to do together. I need this because I don't have any patience to work out. Me neither. But I do like yoga. Yeah, me too. You and I could definitely hang out. This is way more than an interview <laughs> or, or a marathon. However you want to call it. Okay, what is the most important trait in a partner? True love. Yeah. Because then if you have that, you have a lot of good traits in there. (laughs) Do you sing in the shower? Yes. And in the bath. Oh, in the bath? Now that's interesting. What do you sing in the bath? Um, Sometimes Mexican songs from my childhood. Whatever comes into my head. What's your favorite song from childhood? Oh, you know, I like these romantic songs that are called boleros and there's millions of them. And they're very melodramatic and romantic. So you're in the shower and you're singing. Are you a good singer? I can belt it in the shower. (laughs) And it's got good acoustic, so it's okay. I have a shower that only has like one string of Water, not like lots of it. Oh, like a And I kind of sing and dance because I put it in my shoulder. 
It's like a whole party in there, you know? I move, I'm laying down. My husband thinks I'm crazy. Nobody's watching you. You can do so, you know, you, you can enjoy the water. Why do you have to stand? People are missing out. You're missing out, baby. All right, Selma, you were such a delight. This was really fun. Try it. Try the shower thing. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. I joined Ellen on her set. What's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all gonna get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited! She's excited. Three, two, one, champion! So grateful. That close to crime. Here we go! Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Drew Barrymore, this is the Six Minute Marathon with Savannah. Welcome. I'm so excited to do this with you. This is the kind of questions I feel like everybody wants and you know the secret recipe. I hope, I hope that I can meet that high standard. Okay, what's the weirdest thing a fan has ever done for you? Well, these really nice women, it's not weird. They opened the Drewseum, which is like a Drew museum. It's weird that they would ever be interested to do so, but I love them. So I'll promote the Drewseum. I would like to go to the Drewseum. It's really cool. Have you ever used the fact that you are a celebrity to get out of trouble? Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Any two chance I get. <laughs> what line from your movies or TV shows do people quote the most? Well, I can think of one that me and my uh, friends from Ever After, Angelica Houston, it's not even my line. She's like, after all that I've done, after all that I do, it's never enough. <laughs> and for some reason, like when you're raising kids, that comes out almost every day. <laughs> Just words to live by. What's the <laughs> last picture you took with your phone? Um, it was uh, it was to Gail King. I was oh. taking a picture of me in front of the monitor here at our studio. So, so you're cheating on me with another morning show anchor? I know, I know, I'm a dirty bird. Oh, cheater, okay. What is one thing you would tell yourself in 2010, one decade ago? <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> if you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Annie Hall, uh, for sure. And then Dumb and Dumber, like a cross between those two. You kind of have an Annie Hall look going today. I'm so inspired by Diane Keaton and Annie Hall. And like, also like Shelly Hack and uh, the Charlie Girl. I love like early Chloe, very timeless, feminine, sexy 70s. You're rocking it. What's the best concert you ever went to? Um, 
I, I just went straight to a Bonnaroo concert where you have to drive really far out. I think it's in Tennessee. Gosh, forgive me if it's not. But we lived on a tour bus for three days. And um, it was so debaucherous and so fun and so free. And I just put makeup all over my face and feathers in my hair and wellies. And it was like living that life. And so I'm going to go with that because it was three days long. You really got your money's worth. <laughs> Sounds like almost famous kind of thing. It was. It was. And Jimmy Fallon was there. So he's an almost famous. So yeah. OK, what has someone borrowed but never given back? My friend's boyfriend borrowed a book from me and never gave it back. And I will never forgive him. The only thing I don't want to loan out is my books. You can have the clothes off my back, anything. But my books are like these adventures I keep and I write my name on them. And they're such, I take such pride and ownership in them. Do you remember what the book was? Bastard Out of Carolina. Oh, I read that book. I loved that book. Yeah, books are like. Mm. Which fashion trend do you regret partaking in? None. When it comes to clothes, I feel super confident. Like, there are no mistakes to be made. Same with like hair and makeup. It's like, just go for it. Although I did wear this one Gucci dress that made my boobs look like ski slopes. I mean, <laughs> you never wear a high collar with a high belt. Okay. It, it accentuates this area in ways I had no idea. <laughs> um, what is something you are working on improving about yourself? Oh, God, that's a long list. Let me pick one. Uh, I'm really working on how I figure out problems with people and I've now found out like going off to the side and not doing it in a group setting is having better results. Like we'll, f we'll work it out on the sidelines. It's been my new life lesson the last year. What has been your favorite role thus far? I'm really loving this one. It's not a character, it's just me. Um, I did like to get to play Dylan in Charlie's Angels. I loved kicking butt and being with my girlfriends and getting to be in all those disguises and wigs and costumes. Like there was nothing that that job didn't fulfill. <laughs> it was pretty epic. Okay, are you a morning bird or a night owl? I used to be a night owl, now I'm a morning bird. Yes, Kids! Kids, morning show? Yes, exactly. And I've always woken up at 4 a.m. to go to work, um, but I used to be much more like nocturnal. And now I'm like, I mean, I can't, you know, when we meet for a cocktail, it's like at 5 p.m., yeah. maybe four. Yeah. Like, I hate when people are like, dinner at eight. I'm like, oh, oh no. How about let's just do it all in the day and be in bed when the sun goes down? That's the perfect schedule as far as I'm concerned. This is why it works. Mm hmm If you could have a superpower, what would it be? To read as fast as possible. I would read even more. <laughs> what did you think was going to be amazing but turned out horrible? The chicken I made the other day. Oh my gosh, this roast chicken. That poor bird died in vain. It was the worst thing. <laughs> uh, by the way, I now understand the definition of rubber chicken. Last one. Who would you call for a girl's night out? Lou. I'm like, but we'll have a girl's day out. Uh, yes. Um, Cameron Diaz, which sucks because it sounds name droppy, but we've been friends since we were 14 and 16. She was a junior model and I worked in a coffee house. I love it. And what's your nickname for her? Because it always makes me laugh. Auntie Poo Poo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it there, Drew. I love you. I'll see you for drinksies soon at 3 I love you too at 2 p.m. <laughs> okay, one. You got it. Oh, yes! Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska.
Ready Actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. No matter what role she takes on, Gwyneth Paltrow is sure to glow. After a decades-long career in Hollywood that earned her an Oscar. She's goopier than I am. The actress now prefers her role as founder and CEO of Goop. Hello. A lifestyle empire valued at $250 million. Goop is just going great. You continue to be a mogul. Are you ever still surprised at, that this has just taken off the way it has? Yeah, you know, it's so funny because when you work so hard at something for so many years and it feels like it's almost growing in increments that you can barely notice. I've been trying actually to stop and take stock a little bit more and appreciate a little bit more lately what we've been able to build. Now, her daughter, Apple, who's 16, is getting in on all of it, helping launch Goop's latest glow lotion. Good morning, Goop. How did that come about? So she was sort of part of the product development process. And so that when it came out, I was like, oh my gosh, should I let her be in the picture or not? Because she wanted to be in the picture. So we, we decided to let her. Well, I love her TikTok video. She's basically <laughs> trolling you. Just prances around the bathroom putting on her millions of Goop Glow products. That's what she does all the time. That's what I was telling you. <laughs> Constantly. Do you think she'll go into the family business? At this point, what is the family which one? business? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which one? I don't know. I think both of my kids are sort of like, we don't want to think about what we want to do. We just kind of want to see what unfolds. Not everything Goop sells is family friendly. The wellness brand works to shatter taboos, including selling a certain device once found at the back of an adult bookstore. You do mm -hmm. have some products mm -hmm. that keep selling out. Mm-hmm. And um, are you surprised? <laughs> you know, no. I, in a way, I'm, I'm not surprised. Look, I think that our sexuality is such an important part of who we are. And, you know, even the fact, like, if you think about it, we're on morning television, so we can't talk about female pleasure. <laughs> I just, just bleeped you... that out. I just bleeped it out. <laughs> but, you know, it sort of gives you an insight into how culturally we're still, it's still taboo. And one of the things we really believe in at Goop is kind of eliminating shame from these topics. Is your mother ever like, Gwyneth, I can't Always. believe. <laughs> Always. Because Ms. Blythe Danner is very elegant and very, very proper, it seems to me. <laughs> she is, but you know, even proper ladies I th have sexuality too. This is part of your legacy now, you know? <laughs> like, good. Really? Okay, so if it's in like the first paragraph of your obituary, Gwyneth Paltrow, Oscar winner, and, you know, and the candle. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll all be, you know, I'll be an amalgam of many things, as all women are. While Gwyneth has been keeping busy recently, last year, she became one of the 31 million Americans who contracted COVID-19. You actually had COVID early on. Yeah. How do you feel now? I know you had some long haul symptoms. Are you feeling better? Yeah. Sometimes it, they come back a little bit, but I think it, I'm better and better. It's been pretty crazy though. It's been pretty wild. I'm not gonna lie. You and your hubby <laughs> got married, but didn't move in together right away. Then mm -hmm. you moved in together and the pandemic struck. How was that? It was amazing. <laughs> I, I married the right Dude, like he is the best, and I there's like nobody to nobody better to be stuck with. How has it been home with your kids? Because you've got he's got two teenagers, you've got two teenagers. 
It's been the best. There are some really significant, profound silver linings from this crazy 12 months. And that time with the kids has been definitely on the top of the list. Beautiful family. Day. We've got a great show for you on this Monday morning, including my exclusive chat with Hoda, you can see only here. Plus, Al's daughter tied the knot this weekend, and he's got all the scoop on the special day. But first, let's kick it off with Pop Start. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced the birth of their daughter, Lilibet Diana, and Carson has the latest details. Take a look. Time for Pop Start. Hit it. Here we go, guys. First up, Harry and Megan. As we mentioned, the couple welcome baby Lilibet Diana over the weekend. Their daughter's name holding some deep family roots. With more on that is NBC's Molly Hunter, who joins us from Buckingham Palace. Molly, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. That's right, on the cover of every single newspaper here, but you'll notice that's an old photo. We are still waiting for our first photo of little Lily. Full name, as you said, Carson, Lady Lilibet Diana Montbatten Windsor. It is a mouthful for a little California girl and a future princess. Lilibet Diana Montbatten Windsor, a name fit for the eighth in line to the British throne. At seven pounds and 11 ounces, she's the queen's 11th great-grandchild. Lilibet is a family nickname for the 95-year-old monarch, something we all learned on The Crown. Lilibet, they're waiting. Throughout her life, she was called Lilibet by her parents and grandparents and, uh, and, of course, by her late husband. And she enshrined that, really, when she signed herself Lilibet on the card that was placed on Prince Philip's coffin at his funeral. Her middle name, Diana, of course, chosen to honor her beloved late grandmother, Princess Diana, who would have been 60 next month. But to her family and big brother Archie, it looks like she'll be just Lily. Prince William and Kate offering their congratulations. We are all delighted by the happy news of the arrival of baby Lily. Congratulations to Harry, Meghan and Archie. Prince Charles and Camilla and Buckingham Palace all joining in to celebrate. It's been a tumultuous year for this family. Does this mean something extra? I think uh, that a lot of people are saying, uh, quite rightly, that this is a form of olive branch to the uh, royal family. As well as that, a message, I hope at least, uh, that, um, that the events of the, um, of the spring are all behind them. Earlier this year, that bombshell interview widening the split between Meghan and Harry and the rest of the family, but they did break this piece of exciting news. Is it a boy or is it a girl? You can tell her. No, I can her. No, no to go. Now, like her big brother, baby Archie, she won't actually get that HRH title until Prince Charles become king, becomes king. But guys, get this. She's actually the most senior royal in the current line of succession, who was born overseas, who is also eligible to be president of the United States. Oh, Carson. Wow. Oh, wow. Detail, yeah. Molly. Whoa. Wow, Molly. Thank you for that. Thanks, Molly. Thanks, Thanks, you that. Thanks, Molly. need a pie chart to figure all that out. I, a graph of I like calling her a senior a royal episode. since she's three days old. <laughs> Man. Holly Hunter across the pond with the pop star news. Thank you so much for that. Next up, Kennedy Center Honors. Honors aired last night, hosted by singer Gloria Stefan, the annual event that pays tribute to lifetime achievements of performing artists. Looked a little different this year due to the pandemic. Debbie Allen, Joan Baez, Garth Brooks, violinist um, Midori, and Dick Van Dyke all honored with the Kennedy Center Medal. And among the many celebrities who showed up to pay tribute, Julie Andrews shared some kind words for her Mary Poppins co star and friend Dick Van Dyke. Dick is many things. He's an artist, a one-man band, a profound philosopher, a high-stepping showman, and spreader of charm. Mm -hmm. The show also featured celebrity performances of some of Van Dyke's notable musical numbers, including Al Put On a Happy Face, oh, yeah. and of course Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mm -hmm. Showing up to perform a tribute for honoree Garth Brooks was Kelly Clarkson, who took the stage with a very touching rendition of the dance that brought the audience to tears including Garth. Oh, I want to hear the whole thing. Kill. So good. She loves Garth. I know what this moment meant to her. Mm. Wow. And the feeling is mutual. Uh, you can check that whole thing on its entirety later today. <laughs> Coming up next on Today Talks, Savannah marks a big anniversary, and we're celebrating, so stick around for the Savannah anniversary. Our across America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. 
reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Welcome back. Today on the third hour, the gang celebrates Savannah's 10-year anniversary on Today. Plus, Al reveals all the sweet moments from his daughter's Courtney's wedding. Check it out. It is a special morning here. Today marking 10 years since Savannah Guthrie joined our Today team right here. And uh, we've been celebrating this Savannahversary all morning <laughs> long. Ms. Guthrie! Come on over! Please come on over! We have a budget to have, like, double doors. No, I know. It's <laughs> Ridiculous, but thank you. I think we have bigger news, which is no. Al's daughter getting married. No. We're gonna get to that. We'll, we'll, we'll I'm talk like, about we're, that. We're starting with you first. So how are you feeling? I feel I feel really grateful and kind of speechless. It's sort of overwhelming. Like I don't it's just too much, but it's it's so sweet. I just mm -hmm. I'm just soaking it in and appreciating it. I feel like sometimes really people blessed. don't get their flowers soon enough, so yeah. I feel like it's so great that we're able to push the pause button and and, and celebrate you. So we all have things to say. Mine will be quick. Um, Is it but, ever? <laughs> it's never quick, but I'm going to make it quick. So one of my highest moments in my life and kind of lowest moments, not lowest moments, but lonely moments, yeah. was the, actually it was the... Was it the inauguration? You probably don't even know this. Not the inauguration. It's, it's not, where, the, where the presidents get Sounds are like funny. It. God, my God, <laughs> what is wrong? White House Correspondence Center. Center. White House Correspondence oh. Center. I cannot even believe I forgot that. Anyway, <laughs> and it was um, President Barack Obama's last one. So yeah. obviously that was a big ticket. But I was new here. I didn't know anybody. And I went by myself. Because I can get along with, you know, yes, pretty much anyone. anyone. But that's a different crowd. I'm not in the White House yeah. bubble. So I walked in and it was tough. Like I learned how to be by myself, but it was kind of lonely. Um, and so I remember after it was over, I just kind of felt like a fish out of water. And I was going back to my hotel. It was time to go back. And Savannah just happened to be outside, and she mm -hmm. saw me. And she actually saw me. Like, Aww. there are a lot of people who kind of look and go yeah. another way. And she locked my eyes. And for some reason, I don't know if her soul felt my soul or something, but she's like, come in my car. So we got in the car, and I just start bawling. You probably don't even remember this. Remember. And she just affirmed me. And it was like, Aww. you know, it's not always easy. You know, this is the network. It's a lot. And I just remember, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I got home, and I was like, Mom, Savannah was just so sweet. Aww. And she just, she saw me. And last but not least, the first person who texted me after my vocal surgery, Savannah. Aww. Uh, scriptures, things to keep you going. I mean, she's there. just yeah. that woman. I feel like people need to know behind the scenes, she is everything. She's that woman. That's Which, the nicest thing I've heard today. And you know what? You're an amazing person, amazing friend. And I'm just Stop talking like that. No, just but I am. It. Just yeah. so grateful. Which, to, to that point, you know, for, for folks out there thinking of, like, longevity in their jobs, I mean, did you ever have those those kind of moments where, where you felt insecure or, you uh, know, and over the course of 10 years, yes, it's like... all 10 years. <laughs> all 10 years. Even to this moment, I mean, honestly, I, like, if I'm really honest, it's like, I'm kind of embarrassed because I'm like, I don't even know if people really do like me, oh, you know? Like, so, I, yes, yes, I know. You. And, we like, all love you. as we all know, there's, like, you know, there's been it's ups tough. and downs, but yeah. that's what a family is, you know? And it's, like, I just feel really, really grateful. And I've, um, but I remember all those feelings of being, like, I don't belong here. It was tough. I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to survive here. And I don't want to be embarrassed and, you know, like, I, all of those things, you know? But we're so... 
you know, what, what this all means to me is just like, my goodness, what a blessing. Like, how lucky am I? How did this happen? How did, like, Savannah from Tucson, of all people, like, <laughs> well, this is the craziest thing. I saw the picture you posted on Instagram. Everybody needs oh, yeah. to go to Instagram. <laughs> so you see. I see. Yeah, I did. I, you know what? I'm so embarrassed of that picture, but I just posted it because I'm like, you know what? For every little kid that ever looked like that, yeah. who's like, oh, you're nothing's, you know you're you going, going nowhere. Like, <laughs> That's you know? so true. Yeah, yeah, I feel very grateful. Well, we're, we're so thrilled. Yeah. You officially joined the show in 2011. A lot, yes. a lot uh, happened that year. So our, our five favorite moments from then uh, for number Ready? five. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Siri, not Siri Daly, your good friend, oh. but Siri oh, uh, so from, from, I did from Apple, you know, iPhone. They announced the uh, iPhone 4. You just started here. Voice oh. assistant Siri. So we've become uh, familiar with the technology. Uh, Siri, what does Savannah mean? Oh, they told us we would... Uh, oh. Oh, 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 Hey, Siri. What does Savannah mean? Which part? S. A. Oh, oh, that's it. It's the okay. city. There you go. So, yeah, that we, went really we well. probably should have worked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right now. Should, before we. Uh, also, so Siri came out then. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, another name that we we know <laughs> from that year, Adele. Really. Fourth oh. on the list. That hit, Rolling in the Deep, top song of the year, according to Billboard. And Katy Perry's Firework was number three. And you put you committed that song to memory, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I Firework was my jam. Oh, that was my favorite. That. Yes. You the commencement speech you gave. Yes, I did. Uh, I love. I love that. That's number four. And I loved Adele. And how many times did you try to sing Adele? Oh, my, I, I tried, try, but yeah. Hard because you have a. She's not like Adele. Voice. I don't. Well, no. And can play the guitar. Is. Yes. <laughs> what about number three? Um, speaking of fireworks, uh, for number three, the royal wedding with. Prince William and yes. Princess Well, that was 2011. That was 2011. That was right after. Yeah, I actually came to the Today Show right after that. That yeah. was like, remember that? Yeah. You were there, right? For That's the right. Oh, yeah. Royal wedding. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to play one of the royals during uh, Halloween. Oh, my gosh. Then that fall, it was my first Halloween, and they had me dressed as Prince Charles. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> Good so I was like, I got to dress as a man. Time. That was my first Halloween. Oh, wow. And I didn't really, like, know what Today Show Halloween was. And I was like, oh, you got to get into it oh, here. Yes. We were in local, and you wait, and you watch what the Today Show is oh, doing. And yeah. That's just what you do. And we have another royal coming in at number two, Oprah. Do you remember 2011 was actually the year she, our queen there, uh, stateside, um, she ended the Oprah show. That was a big show. Do you remember wow. that? After 25 seasons, when you started here, she said goodbye. It just, this is what makes you feel like, oh, 10 years was a long time. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Sure. And then yeah. Oprah ending her show, and that year, Savannah joining the Today Show, which was one of our... Dun, da, da, da. Oh, that was fun. So there you go. So I have a question yeah, exactly. for you. When you look back at 10 years, is there a look of yours that you're like, oh, I want to try that again? Ooh. No, mostly it's like, <laughs> never try that again. Mostly it's like, what was I thinking? I, 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 I'll be honest. I love like that haircut. I, two babies ago, I was a little skinnier That's then. I would take, I'd take that, but that was so fun. Remember that, you Al? You really haven't. And I loved my Nat Mo. I loved my Alro. We just had such a good we time. Really did. It we was really so fun. Did. It was such a wonderful way to be welcomed in. I don't know why I thought I needed to dye my hair red that one time. Well, yeah. I don't like, I just, everybody's been through that People phase. trying to forget it, that's oh, why. Yeah, I just went out one day and dyed it red and came in the next day and the, the, all the bosses were like, what's Oh, that's nice. Okay. That's very nice. Well, we, we don't want to like let you red. go. We've got a, a, a gift to commemorate. Before you uh, go. The, the occasion. So the traditional you, gift uh, for a 10-year anniversary <laughs> is tin. Thank Smell you, the cake. Oh. And so uh, we Keep in mind our budget for, constraints. Okay. Yeah. A little something for you. What is it? Oh, it's heavy. What, and I love your wrapping. Whoa. That's okay. okay. It's, right. it's okay. That's classic. <laughs> classic Savannah falling apart. Okay. Oh, I love that. Let me lift it up. Oh, Yay. gang's all here. Right. Selfie. Oh, Thank you. Oh, go. my gosh. You that. Ten the best. They, I know it's beautiful. It's all about us. <laughs> it's all, you know what? It's all about all of us. Yes. Thank you for being such... Yes. Good friends. We love, love you guys. We, we love, love you. you. We love Thank having you. you. Thank you. Now, can we talk about Al's for wedding? Being our North Star. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, by the way, Mr. Roker, his daughter, Courtney, big man. I mean, that was, you threw a heck of a party, buddy. Well, uh, she married a lovely young man, Wes Laga, and uh, uh, her, her mom, uh, Alice, and Deborah and I were thrilled to throw them a, a, a lovely wedding. Yeah. We had a great time. Everybody beautiful. had a great time. Craig, uh, quite the dancer. I mean, when they brought <laughs> really? out the, the 80s and 90s uh, well, hip hop. I 
I uh, I That's hadn't been out of the house in so oh, long. Sweet. What's your oh, signature dance move like? Oh. Is it like a, a it's it's uh, cabbage patch? What is like, it, Craig? I would describe it more as a, a hodgepodge, a collection of of, of dances. <laughs> when from when the, Jump Around came on, I had to back yeah. away because oh, I was a lot of Jump Around. You're with like child. child. You have to be careful. It was at your 40th birthday party, you That's, ended up with a head wound. I did, <laughs> and I, I was that close to having another one. But it was such a special night. Well, and thank you for joining. And I know Savannah wanted to be there. Nancy, your mom. Yeah, my mom. Okay, so yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we should have brought her just a brought her. I know. Oh. She can dance, let me tell you. <laughs> I can't wait for Leela's wedding. Well, that's gonna be a great one. That's a ways away, hopefully. Were you nervous, Al? You were the father of the bride. I texted you. It's like Yeah, you know, once I got through we got through the, the vows and, and uh, uh the father there were emotional dance, moments. You know, it was yeah. uh, it was all uh, and of course uh, Craig kissing me on the on the head was a, a, a one I, of those moments. I, that was that's that was but how I impulse? how I said goodbye. No, you know he was. We were standing there. We were engaged in some sort of deep conversation. I'm sure, and I just you know how I feel about Roker. So I, <laughs> that's sweet. I wanted to. You showed the picture. The I saw it on Instagram. It's so cute. Did you show the head kiss? The head? I don't know if we had you got to show it. They told me we had it. Oh, I guess, you know what I, I will guess say. The censor said no. Let's not <laughs> yeah. show that. I will say it finally. You were present at the wedding. You know, some people they're so busy just trying to kind of yeah. go to everybody. Oh, there, Every, there we go. Every time I looked at Al, he was really in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, see the famous stars who came together to sing a sweet tribute to Lisa Kudrow. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit PlanYourVaccine.com and make your plan. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today on the fourth hour, Hoda shares sweet pictures of the Today Gang at Al's daughter's wedding. Plus, I reveal the thrilling adventure I'm about to try. Take a look. What's going on? I know. It's time to get everything back in. Don't you feel like you, it is? You did. Oh you went God. to a wedding and, and fully danced. S sweaty dance. You know what? Think about the last time you sweaty danced on a dance floor. You like shook it and you were drenched and you didn't care. And by the way, there's a difference between like toddler dance party yes, and dancing. Your house. Right? That's, we've done plenty of. Yes. This is like real. Al Roker's daughter, Courtney, uh, got married over the weekend and it was beautiful. I wish she married a, a man named, named Wesley and that's Alan Deborah. Oh. And Leela was maid of honor, Nick was a groomsman. I mean, it was a whole awesome thing. And it was just really fun to watch a beautiful celebration. People were, I mean, I was literally thinking, Joel and I were talking about it, it's the first time in like a year and a half we've ever been anywhere dancing. Yes. And it was so fun and joy-filled and hilarious. And anyway, it was a, it was also, a great And also, isn't day. it kind of like a year ago, could you ever have imagined no. this? No. This picture. No. So many of your friends. Right. So close. Right. And no masks. And, and no everybody's masks. fine. And it, yeah, I think everyone was vaccinated at the wedding. It was really cool. Well, I just feel like celebrations are even sweeter. I know. Right? And then 
then you guys made a road trip yes. because your hubby was a hit in the road. Yeah, what we happened? went up to Lake Placid Henry Road in a, a mountain bike race. Oh. That's him right before we started. Uh, he did it in honor of his dad oh. um, because his dad actually was did 13 or plus wheelchair marathons. Are you kidding and me? And Henry um, would oh ride God. alongside <gasps> his bike next to his dad. Oh. And so we oh. um, went and cheered him on. Actually, the race was canceled because of COVID, but he and about uh, two dozen um, people, men and women, did it anyway, and he raised money for Sheltering <gasps> Arms, which is oh. an organization that helps um, Was that embrace disabled. at the end? That embrace was at the end. It was a smooch. Oh. smooch. It was very awkward. But I was, you know what, what's funny about kisses? They're always, they always photograph weird, no matter what. This, that, first of all, in that one, my chin looks like open. Archie's. Your mouth is open. It's huge. Is that your mouth that's and open? And then also, look at the poor traumatized <laughs> Poppy who's squished between her parents. She'll never forget that moment of pure horror. And By the way, I don't think, I mean, getting a beautiful kiss. That's the worst. Kiss. I have a sideburn, too. About, Thank you for pointing it no, out. How about even a wedding kiss? They always look <laughs> awkward in photographs. They just do. It's like half open. I, I and, know. And you uh, know what? When I posted that, I was like, God, it looks like I'm trying to eat him. Why is my mouth open? But anyway, I'm really right. proud of him. Okay, I'm proud of him. And that's, so, I was probably saying, pra. Uh, uh, <laughs> So proud, <laughs> and frozen forever in time. Okay, so um, Jenna is going to do something, hopefully on Friday, weather permitting, that um, I think takes a lot of courage and guts. And also, you're doing it for a bigger reason than yourself. Otherwise, you couldn't be. You would not be doing this stunt. No, and this I'm still scary. like when I talk about it, I start to sweat yes. in ungodly places. But I'm <laughs> taking the plunge. Literally, I'm skydiving. Wait, so you're jumping out of a plane? I'm jumping out of a plane. With a parachute? With a parachute and a person in tandem. on my back in tandem, live on the air. Um, in, in honor of my grandpa, whose birthday is on Saturday, mm. and something mm. that he did to celebrate life. Um, and I'm, join, I'm jumping with the U.S. Army Golden Knights, which is who he used to okay. jump with, okay. which I'm so excited okay. about. And I'm doing it at a really cool place, the National Museum of the United States Army. It's in, in, um, right outside of Alexandria. Fort Belfort, right. And I get to jump. I went and visited this incredible museum, and I get mm. to jump with the, the exact people. Okay. I get to see the person my grandfather <gasps> jumped with. And then I'm jumping out of what a plane. What did your grandfather used to say after? Did he ever talk about yeah, what it well, was like? Yeah, well, he did it because uh, when he was in the Navy, yeah. he hit his head when he jumped. He didn't yeah. have a clean jump. Yeah. And he, you know, then was rescued. Uh -huh. He was 19. Oh, and so I think he regretted that jump. For, yeah. uh, he didn't talk about it much, right. but he did because uh, others in the plane didn't make it. Uh -huh. And so he always wanted to relive it, to try mm -hmm. it again. And so he did, and he did again and again. Um, but I think there was something about seeing the world that way. Wow, um, beautiful. But I'm, but I'm scared. Well, because you're going to be screaming. You will be all the way down. I know. Ooh, and then I just know. the face flap. Just the fa <laughs> face flap alone has right. me terrified. Well, there are people who've done this, so we're looking for a support group. <laughs> so if you have ever done this before and you have some advice, like there's probably some great advice that people have who've done it. Like, oh, if I only had done that. Yes. If I had By only... the way, I did do it once when I was 18. You, but if you okay. met the Jenna 18 versus the Jenna now, whatever I am. Right, because now you got three kids. I've got three right? kids, and at 18, I was still terrified. But you weren't, you didn't have as much. But I was wild right. and free, and they just, they just yeah, pushed me out of the plane, and like, there I bye. went. So this is the second time okay, I'll be doing Okay, so if you've it. ever gone skydiving, we want to hear from you. We want to get your video, maybe some advice for Jenna. Things that she, do's and don'ts. So go to our website, hodaandjenna.com, and submit yours. Okay, all right. Well, here is a group of friends that we didn't even know were friends. How is that possible? And also, I just wanted to be sitting, like, in the very Nestled. back of the piano. Look at this group. It's Courtney Cox, Ed Sheeran, Elton John, and Brandy oh. Carlisle. Okay, first of all, if you haven't listened to Brandy Carlisle's music, oh. I don't know who you are and what you're doing. And the Go book to you, it. And her great her book. book yeah. It's called Broken Horses. is incredible. So the four of them got together on the piano for a little musical tribute to Lisa Kudrow. Yeah, so if you, I don't know if you guys remember, but from one of the Friends episodes, there was a beautiful Phoebe moment <laughs> that this came from. Take a look. The most romantic song ever was The Way We Were. Uh, see, I, I think the one that Elton John wrote for um, that guy on Who's the Boss. <laughs> what song was that, Phoebes? Um, Hold me close, young Tony Downs. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
first of all, I didn't know that she was the one that coined that. I mean, I remember the episode, yeah. but now, okay, Courtney has all of her friends yeah. over and they relive it. Take a look. Lisa Kudrow, this is for you. One, two, three. News after the break with an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Our across America journey here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Roll. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, check it. I'm so grateful. Is that close to crime? Here we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We're going to do our part and get vaccinated live. A very special naturalization ceremony. This is a really inspiring group. Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here on Today All Day. So we're so excited. Savannah, 10 years here at the Today Show. I mean, I have to say, um, I knew when she started here like she was magic. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I learned more and more and more about her over the years. Like, you know, it starts off as she's super smart. Yes. And then it starts off by she's super smart and super deep. And then she's super deep, super smart, and super nice. And super faith filled yeah. and super funny. It's like, but you know, I have to tell you, the time I learned, may have learned the most about Savannah was when I interviewed you and Savannah for my radio show. I don't even know if you remember it. And I did something on like what it's like to have a real soulmate. Yeah. And you guys were sharing. And I have to tell you, Jenna, it, it, to this day it touches me and I thought it was so beautiful. And I remember thinking like, you, you make a lot of great friends mm -hmm. at work. Well, isn't but it there weird? Was, it's like, yeah. the, it's just strange how life takes a yeah. turn. And actually, um, Savannah once showed me this clip yeah. from my wedding where she was standing in front of fake hay bales. <laughs> And you know, her hair has changed so oh, many different colors. It? Covering the wedding. Oh, stop it. And she had some sort of hilarious line like, it's not top secret, but pretty close. <laughs> or some sort of like, you know, sign out that was just yeah. cute and clever. And then she did a whole spot on our wedding. And then, you know, and fast you forward however many years, not even that many maybe five how did you know it was like a friendship that would click sometimes you know when you meet someone initially sometimes it takes a second i think but it took time i mean i can't really remember but i do yeah. remember the first time we hung out or met yeah. was in the makeup room yeah. here and she, it must have been her, her first day and we were talking about friends in dc and just yeah. how small of a town yeah, it is yeah, because yeah. there's been some yes <laughs> some, <laughs> some stuff she knew some yeah. people and and we were laughing and and i do think there's something about where we're from Mm -hmm. I mean, we had very different childhoods, but I grew up in West Texas. Mm -hmm. She's from Arizona. Arizona. I think our, I, her mom reminds me a lot of my grandma, Jenna, somebody who loves yes. books and nature. And so I just feel like, you know, it, and, but I never would have expected that. Yeah. Like, that's the well, lesson. I ran from people like Savannah <laughs> when my dad was president. <laughs> Literally now you're like, ran. I would run from from my the parent. Well, I remember what she was saying about you too, and she talked about how you were such like an effervescent surprise. Like she didn't know when she first met you. Yeah, I'm like, sure she thought the same thing about me. By the way, but I think it's cool. I think it's neat, and 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 also to think about your kids and her kids mm -hmm. and how everybody mm -hmm. is. So when we're celebrating her 10 years on the 
the show, I think a lot of people know her like just through the screen. Yes. And then little by little, like Savannah's somebody who the more you know, the more you like. And some people, you love them initially, and then after a while yeah. you're like, you back away. Well, I think the one thing that people are always surprised about the yeah. show, and I, I kind of yeah. was surprised when I first started, because, and my dad calls it the, the family, <laughs> because you, everybody says the Today Show family. Yeah. I'm not sure if they say that about other shows, yeah. but it's really this is real. real. This is real. I mean, yeah. everybody's like, what do you, what, what about sitting next to Hoda? Like, yeah. like we would not have this yes. same friendship yes. when the camera goes black, you know? And way, it's like, thank goodness. You and I couldn't so, fake that. No, it's so true. And I think that is the great thing about all these shows. Like, you can pretend for a minute. Yeah. And when it's real, like this is real, you know it. And when it's real, like with Savannah, it's real, yes. you know it. So Don't you feel so lucky. That I you really get to do. I really do. Like I sit next to her in the early, and we hang out here at, in the afternoon. After that, and I just <laughs> in the afternoon. The afternoon. Like the afternoon. <laughs> okay, we have to go. That was that even good? <laughs> what were we talking about? Anyway, that's it for our episode of Today Talks. Keep watching for more of Today All Day. Coming out of this crazy year, what are you looking forward to the most when life really gets back to normal? I'm looking forward to going to restaurants and <laughs> museums and just kind of like spending a day wandering around, interacting with just that, all that stuff that we've just missed, you know, like nothing even so crazy. Just just kind of like getting back out into the world and, and experiencing s sensory things. <laughs> Seeing humans, <laughs> making eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. exactly. It's an adjustment. You actually had COVID early on. Yeah. How do you feel now? I know you had some long haul symptoms. Are you feeling better? Yeah. I, I feel better. I, I, sometimes it, they come back a little bit, but I think it, I'm better and better. It's, it, it was pretty, it's been pretty crazy though. It's been pretty wild. I'm not going to lie. You famously, um, I guess kind of famously, you and your hubby <laughs> got married, but didn't move in together right away. Then you mm -hmm. moved in together and the pandemic struck. So you yeah. went from kind of having your own space to having <laughs> zero space and 24-7, 365. How was that? It was amazing. <laughs> I, I married the right dude. <laughs> like, he is the best. And oh. I, there was like nobody, to, nobody better to be stuck with. So I'm, I am glad we moved in together before the pandemic hit. <laughs> yeah, it's like from zero to 100, but thank goodness that you're I mean, it could have gone in a different direction. Like that, it's affirming that yeah. you're 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 actually like, okay, this you're the right person. That's a good point. That's a good point. No, you're definitely right. <laughs> How has it been home with your kids? Because you've got he's got two teenagers, you've got two teenagers. It's been the best. I mean, I, it's like you know, there are some really significant, profound silver linings from this crazy twelve months. And that time with the kids has been definitely on the top of the list. And, you know, we were just saying last night how it was amazing to, you know, with teenagers are usually having dinner, like we always eat all together, but then it's like they're rushing off to do X, Y, and Z. And for the last 12 months, we've all just had these long, lingering, wonderful conversations at meals. and you know, visits where, you know, my daughter will just come in and kind of lay on the couch and kind of catch up. And, you know, that to me has been the most precious gift of this whole time. I mean, it's a dream. You, your yeah. teenagers, I mean, when I was a teenager, I found my parents to be deeply embarrassing <laughs> and uncool. <laughs> But mm -hmm. your kids are lucky. They have two, two cool parents. Like, do they see it that way? Mm, no, no. <laughs> my daughter, my daughter thinks we're totally embarrassing. My daughter like makes fun of us all the time, and she always has. It's pretty funny. I think my son thinks we're we're pretty cool, maybe. But he's he just turned fifteen, so maybe he'll start to get a different opinion soon. He might he might turn into the skeptical dark teenager. <laughs> yes, it happens. Well, you have um, Goop is just going great. You continue to be a mogul. You've got a new skincare <laughs> line. You mm -hmm. have um, 
a gadget that shan't be mentioned <laughs> that's sold out. Mm -hmm. Can you believe, are you, are you ever still surprised at, that this has just taken off the way it has? Yeah, you know, it's so funny because when you work so hard at something for so many years and it feels like it's almost growing in increments that you can barely notice. So I think it's so important sometimes to stop and be like, wow, we actually got somewhere. Like we're a brand that means something to people and we're so proud of the things that we make and, and what we put into the world. And like people are actually reading it and coming to the site. So I've been trying actually to stop and take stock a little bit more and appreciate a little bit more lately what we've been able to build. You've got this new skincare line. Apple, your daughter, is actually a big part of the launch. How did that come about? Well, this, um, so we have a couple of different lines. One is the Goop Glow line. So it's, it's all about like super healthy, glowy skin and how you get it from the inside out and amazing ingestible product and topical product. And we were doing this moisturizer, this light glow moisturizer, and beca partly because she, She's very into makeup and skincare, and um, she loves the Glow line. And so um, she was like, I w you know, I, I, you guys should make a light moisturizer that has like, gives you like a little bit of a glow. So she was sort of part of the product development process. And so that when it came out, I was like, oh my gosh, should I let her be in the picture or not? Because she wanted to be in the picture. So we, we decided to let her, but it's nice. It's nice when it feels like, your family's contributing to what you're doing and the things that you're making and to have that kind of support. Like my mom was a model for me last summer with our Goop Jeans line. Um, and, and so it's so nice to have like these two generations of women who love you being supportive. It's so sweet. Well, I love her TikTok video. First, my mom drinks her Goop Glow Super Powder and she eats nothing except for dates and almond butter. She's basically <laughs> trolling you. That's what she does all the time. That's what I was telling you. <laughs> Constantly. She's, um, she's saying my mom is always, she's been on a cleanse yeah. since I was born and she's always <laughs> drinking a smoothie and making candles and she's um, even teasing you about Goop's focus on a certain female body part. Yep, yep, that's right. I get it all day long. I mean, she is so funny. It's funny, one of my best friends from growing up, a guy named Tony Liness, he was like, because my father was really funny, and he always says she is the non-recessive Paltrow humor gene. <laughs> <laughs> she is really, like, she's, um, she's sassy. She's super sassy. Oh, yeah, big time. She's powerful, and she's articulate and funny, and I love that kind of dry, sassy sense of humor. Do you think she'll go into the family business? At this point, what is the family which one? business? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which one? I don't know. She's very, you know, it depends day to day. She's really interested in a lot of things. She's really interested in history and political science and law. And, you know, she's, and she loves the art. She's amazing draw. You know, so I don't know. Like, she... I think both of my kids are sort of like, we don't want to think about what we want to do. We just kind of want to see what unfolds. And, you know, because I think as parents, we're like, wow, I wonder what direction they're going to go in. But they have time. <laughs> we don't have to push yeah, it. They do. Yeah. It's true. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. I joined Ellen on her set. What's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. 
they are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? I was listening to a podcast you did and I thought it was so interesting. You talked about your dad and you talked about your upbringing. Mm. And even though you had two famous successful parents and you had a lot of opportunity, it was so interesting to me. You talked about how your dad kind of said, once you're out on your own, you're on your own. You know, you, you, you mm -hmm. can make, you can go for it in acting, you can go for it in Hollywood, but it's on you. I mean, do you, yeah. that, I thought that was really cool and interesting, but also hard yeah. to do as a parent. Like, do you feel you could pull that yeah. off now? You know, I think that was one of the most valuable things he gave me was saying, you know, look, you're growing up in a privileged environment, but this is my money. This is not yours. And when you leave home, we're done. Like, I'm never giving you a penny. <laughs> and he stuck to it. Like, it was, it was a great lesson. And I had to learn how to completely fend for myself. And I thought that he would offer a safety net, and he didn't. Wow. So um, it was it was a wonderful way to understand what I was made of and what I was capable of, um, and you know it knocked any part of me that had a, the spoiled part of my upbringing like knocked it right out, um, and and I really admire him for sticking to it because as you say like that would really that would pull at my at my heartstrings but he he stuck to it. Do you feel like that's something? you'll be able to do or do you want to do? I think about this all the time with my own kids. You know, I think it's really important that children learn to create a life that they are in charge of and to have that agency. And so I always encourage them. You know, it's, it's both of my kids, like my daughter had a retail, has had two retail jobs. Like she, I think just from, witnessing me work and respecting that and and the freedom of you know that it gives her you know to buy the crop top that she wants to buy and um, I think it's one of the most important things that we can do to our children is instill that work ethic. You are also in the midst of the Goop Lab season two. Mm -hmm. I'm a big viewer. Are you thank you. Are you doing anything adventurous? This time around, um, this this season is different. It's kind of a different, um, like the content. It's the setup is a bit different. So I, I'm not I'm not doing anything too daring. I I actually had an idea for the show where I wanted to. So I'm trying to convince Netflix for next time. Like I have an idea that's probably might, might be too a little too daring, but. Um, it's been so incredible to film it, and I'm so excited for this version. They never let you talk about, you know, what it is, but it's going to be really good. Wait, so do I get to hear the daring idea, the pitch? Mm, I don't think so, but <laughs> if if they if they agree to it, then I'll tell you first. How's that? <laughs> I'll take it. I actually <laughs> want to do one of these episodes with you. I want to go do one of these crazy like ice baths, or I don't know. Okay, I'm. Okay, you'll come be my partner in one of them next time. Yeah, unless it's jumping out of a plane or something, then I'm too... Okay, yeah. I don't want to do that either. Okay, good, we agree. i sort of been circling around it because I don't think there's a way to talk about it on morning television, but you do mm -hmm. have some products mm -hmm. that keep selling out. Mm-hmm. And um, are you surprised? <laughs> <laughs> you know... No, I, in a way, I'm I'm not surprised. Look, I think that our sexuality is such an important part of who we are, and you know, even the fact, like, if you think about it, we're on morning television, so we can't talk about female pleasure. <laughs> just I just bleeped you, that out. I just bleeped it out. <laughs> but you know, it sort of gives you an insight into how culturally we're still it's still taboo, and one of the things we really believe in at Goop is kind of eliminating shame from these topics. Have you done anything that where you've like, in this space where you've kind of shocked yourself or surprised yourself that you're talking about it, whether it's the candle or the gadget? Right. 
Um, I think it's all sort of part of this thing of like bringing, bringing female sexuality into the culture and 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 talking about it in a way that kind of demystifies and destigmatizes it. And so I actually think it's great when people are a bit surprised, or you know, by some of the product and you know the it's funny because the candle was a complete accident and um because it just started as a joke and then it became a product but it's it's come to to be a talisman you know t for me of like this really important moment to kind of embrace um all aspects of ourselves and not not feel that kind of shame is your mother ever like Gwyneth I can't Always. believe <laughs> Always. Because Ms. Blythe Danner is very elegant and very, very proper, it seems to me. She is. But, you know, even proper ladies I th have sexuality, too. This is part of your legacy now, you know? <laughs> like Good. Really? Okay, so if it's in, like, the first paragraph of your obituary, Gwyneth Paltrow, Oscar winner, and, you know, and the candle. Yes. Exactly. Ho hopefully it'll all be, you know, I'll be an amalgam of many things, as all women are. What about acting? Because you did The Politician. You mm -hmm. did, I know you are totally consumed with your company. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But do you still want to pursue acting? Are we going to see you on screen again soon? Well, you'll see me on screen in the Goop Lab. Yeah. For sure. And you know, I it's just, it's not really my focus right now. I think if you do see me on screen, it would probably be you know something that my husband was doing. Otherwise, I got to focus on my day job. I know he's the only one who lured you back to Hollywood. That's right. <laughs> you are kind of a lightning rod. We always talk mm -hmm. about this. Yeah, yeah. Why? You know, I don't, I, I think I know, but I'm, I don't even know that it's, I feel like it's my job to not engage in the, in the opinions about me, good or bad, positive, negative over time. It's like, I'm really focused on, you know, what I'm doing. And I think it's actually like, especially at Goop, what we're putting into the world is actually really important and moving culture forward. And if I started to get upset about people's responses to whatever, you know, it might pull me back from that. So I try just not to pay too much attention and really stay in my integrity and move forward. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Congratulations to Lester Holt the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated Are cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. It is. <laughs> hey, now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.
For more than two decades, Gwyneth Paltrow has graced covers, grabbed headlines, and garnered every imaginable accolade, one of Hollywood's perennial A-listers. But these days, this is Gwyneth's proudest accomplishment. Goop, the lifestyle and wellness brand she launched 10 years ago in her kitchen, has grown into a $250 million juggernaut. Its customers loyal and passionate, and on a Saturday, happy to spend $1,000 to gobble up Gwyneth's wisdom. Did you ever think that Goop would become what it's become? <laughs> I think I had a, a secret dream that it would become what it's become, but um, when I started 10 years ago, I, I had absolutely no idea I had just had a, a vision, but I had no idea how to how to get there, like how to execute on it. Did you know there was an inner CEO in you? <laughs> <laughs> I was always very interested in business. I was always fascinated by it, but I, I didn't think that I had kind of the license to go into business. Sometimes it's written in the press that you stopped acting. Right. It, well, is, they... Are they getting that right? <laughs> is it is, is you stopped acting? Is you pausing from acting? You're uncoupling from acting. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that I am quitting acting. What I say is um, Goop is my full-time passion, and being the founder and CEO of Goop is what I do all day, every day. Um, and occasionally, when something is the right thing and it works out around my children and my Goop life, I'm able to participate. I think I'm just not focused on full-time acting right now. Everyone says you're extremely involved. <laughs> this is not a vanity project where you just oh, no. slap your name on something. Oh, no, no, I, I, I wish at this point. <laughs> what kind of boss would you say you are? Um, I think that I am a, an optimistic boss. I think I am constantly hoping for the highest good for all. Over time, I've had to learn the more difficult qualities of being a boss. It's been interesting as a woman to have to implement more structure and boundaries um, and, you know, giving difficult feedback. Like, that's been, a, that's been a hard part of it for me. What have you learned about yourself in this journey, this particular journey of going into business? I've had to sort of constantly shed my ego along the way because I had to come to terms with how much I didn't know, how much I had to learn. I, I made so many mistakes on the way to learning what I've learned. Goop has sometimes faced criticism, even lawsuits, accusing it of promoting unproven health claims, what some called pseudoscience. Growing pains, Paltrow says she has learned from. But her vision has also been vindicated. Hello. The wellness concept she was among the first to popularize now makes up a $4.2 trillion industry. And we've always said, like, we're just asking questions. And I also really love when we write about something or talk about something at Goop and, you know, the internet goes crazy and then six months later, 12 months later, two years later, you see it kind of being widely adopted into the culture. Well, that has happened a few times. Yes, it has. You it could has. say, I told you so. <laughs> but I would never. <laughs> Gwyneth is well aware of the way some people see her as someone just a bit too perfect. And she's willing to poke fun at herself, like on SNL this weekend. Piper, I, I need your help because I'm really afraid that Gwyneth's going to fire me. <laughs> No, she, she doesn't believe in firing, remember? It's called conscious unemploying. <laughs> right. Well, first of all, for the record, are you perfect? Oh my God, are you insane? <laughs> exactly. I'm a mess. <laughs> Everyone is, but for people to kind of say, is she trying to say she's so perfect and the rest of us are just a bunch of slobs? I mean, that's been actually the opposite of my intention. I always feel like I'm very open about um, my learnings, my shortcomings, my mistakes. I think we're all in process and we're all starting at different places. And I'm, I, I think I'm actually a person who tries to look for ways to really support people and offer solutions and, and ideas. Strolling around the summit, it's easy to get drawn into the Goop universe. One, two, three. For a B12 shot or a different kind of needle. But what about an ear pierce? Well, I don't know. My ears are pretty pierced up. That's true. That's I know. pretty good. Maybe I'll be like Gwyneth and get one right let's here. Let's go do it. I'll, I'm serious. I'll go do okay, it right let's now. Let's go do it. Okay, let's go. All right, are you ready? 
ready? We're ready. We're ready. Okay. Yep. Hey. Hold, we, hold my hand. We got this. Oh, I love your, that is super cool. I'm happy. That's amazing. The double stack, now I want to do that. It's the next one. The next one. <laughs> Oh my God, matching your rings? What I happened? Happen. Ultimate <laughs> bonding experience. Get your ears pierced. I'm always trying to get Siri to come get something. Do it, yeah. Can we see it? Let's it was fun. Oh yeah, Which here one it is. is it? Uh, well, see, now I have dumb four. Question. I mean, who am I? I'm like in high school again, but isn't it kind of fun? It's that little one right there. Ooh, How many cool. do you have total? Well, Whoa. I know, She's it's like, cool. I'm no, such a goody goody that it's like, oh, this is my little rebellion. I have four piercings yeah. on this one now. Yeah. The Gwyneth You're piercing running out is of room. my fourth. And I did this one with Jenna Bush Hager. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I have three on the Celebrity other side. It an hour just to get your ears down. <laughs> no. But anyway, the it was nose really is fun. Next. In one line, what is goop? I still have a hard time defining Yes. That. Well, you know what? You're not the target demographic. Yeah. Yeah. But for women, a lot of women do know. I mean, it's wellness. It's wellness in general, but it's products. It's, yeah. I mean, the Goop Summit, for example, is yeah. what you, they've got panels. And people come and talk. It's, you know, just yeah. a variety. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. Lifestyle, yeah. wellness. There's a newsletter. There's a podcast. There's yeah. Wow. show on Netflix and you know it's funny it's a wide you know, net yeah. yeah it is and she's built this 250 million dollar company I joined Ellen on her set what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show very few people go through such huge public humiliation how can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're joined now by Oscar winner Gwyneth Paltrow. She's one of the stars of the new Netflix series called The Politician. Gwyneth plays the mother of an ambitious high school senior who wants to be president one day and will stop at nothing to get there. It's an ambition that makes her perhaps a little worried. I know this is my only pass. Why does that make you cry? <laughs> because I love you so much. And I know I'm going to do whatever it takes to help you get what you want. And I'm sad for the person that's going to turn me into. Gwyneth Paltrow, good morning. Good morning. This feels so timely on so many levels. <laughs> Ryan Murphy, your husband, Brad Falchuk, created this together. With now, Ian Brennan. Yes, and you guys have, you've worked together before with Glee. Yep. I mean, that's actually how you met Brad. That's right. But I heard you didn't exactly jump at this chance. He had to convince you a little bit. He had to convince me a little bit. I've got a pretty big day job over at <laughs> goop.com. So um, I'd sort of put acting on the back burner. But he, you know, he was writing and he was like, I think I'm writing a part for you. And I was like, I don't think I can do a part. And lo and behold, here I am. There you are. And it, by the way, it does seem like it was written for you. The, the, the part is kind of just perfect for you. <laughs> what do you like about... I don't about... know how I should take that. Well, Savannah. I know, I know, because actually it is true because... This mom character you play, she is a little, she might be a little bit twisted. She's complicated. Yes, yeah, she is, but it's like, but you wear it so well. <laughs> but how, what was it like actually working with Brad and like here he's writing your words and you were interacting, you're an executive producer on the show. Like how did that dynamic all play out? It was the best. It was really easy and you know, I think when you trust someone so much and you love someone so much and they know you so well and you know them it's really actually an interesting characteristic set of characteristics to bring into a workplace it was really nice and this show has so many 
different stars in it. I mean, yes. you've got, it's like some real heavy hitters. Ben Platt was just here yesterday. Jessica Lang plays like an incredible character. Another She's amazing. slightly <laughs> twisted mom. <laughs> I don't know what it says about that. You mentioned just a second ago that you're kind of, in a way, putting acting on the on the back burner. I do almost think of you more of an entrepreneur now. I mean, you yeah. really like Goop seems to be your whole life. It sure is. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. It's, it's. I mean, I love it so much. It's challenging in all the best ways, and um, I learn so much every day. And I love the products that we're making, and you know, the content that we're making. So it's really fun. Did you ever imagine that this is? where you'd end up, like in your 20s, if I said, oh, actually, you're going to want to be a businesswoman more than you're going to want to be an actress. You know what's funny? I was talking to Laura Dern the other day, and she said, do you remember when you were like 25, we were sitting on the porch, and you said, I think I want to go into business one day. And I had no recollection of it, but she said that I was eyeing it even then, which wow. is so strange. So it kind of was always in your heart I and your DNA. So. Hello, today all day. Summer's almost here, and if you're looking for the perfect way to welcome warmer weather, my pal Anthony Contrino is sharing his favorite al fresco meal. Not al roca, but al fresco. We're talking juicy pork milanese, peppery arugula salad, an easy anti-pasti, along with Uncle Pasti, with olives, and of course, a classic Italian cocktail to wash it all down. Mmm. Summer is just around the corner. It's not one of my favorite seasons, but my birthday's in there, so I'll allow it. Anyway, it is gonna be really nice to be able to dine outside with friends. So today I'm whipping up the perfect al fresco meal. I'll be making delicious orange rosemary marinated olives, the juiciest, crispiest pork milanese that you've ever had, topped with a nice fresh salad. And then of course we need a cocktail or two. I'll be making a Negroni and an Americano. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the new set of Saucy. Let's get cooking. I'm gonna be making some delicious orange rosemary marinated olives. We love olives in my family. We have them out for every holiday as part of an antipasti. I'm gonna be using orange and rosemary because those are two flavors that I like and that work really well together. So first things first, I have two different kinds of olives. My favorite, Catlovitrano, which are super buttery, and then a little bit more of a pungent flavor with Kalamata olives. I like the two to balance off each other, and they're really pretty when mixed up together later on. For the marinade itself, we'll start by adding some oil. It's about a third of a cup. You can eyeball this into a small saucepan. So first things first, an orange. Any sweet orange will do. This is a plain navel orange and I'm just cutting a few strips off. Then I like to go back with a knife and carefully, don't hurt yourself here, similar to like filleting fish, remove the bitter pith. We don't need any bitter flavor in our marinade over here. So you can see all the white part is gone and you're left with just the beautiful, super fragrant skin. Right into the pot that goes. Take your time. Better off being safe than sorry with this. And the last one into the pot. Don't want this orange to go to waste. So I'm gonna take that sweet, delicious juice and we'll add that to the pot as well. That'll add a little bit of sweetness to our olives. Next up, garlic. What, what does this happen every time? Six takes later. I'm gonna grab two cloves. You can buy them peeled already, which will save on the aggravation. Okay, so just thin slice, eighth of an inch, even thinner if you can, without hurting yourself, into our pot. Then let's add some more flavor. A bay leaf. I'm gonna add a pinch of red pepper flakes. 
I'm not a big spice person, so I literally just add a tiny little pinch. Last but not least, some fresh rosemary. So I'm gonna cut off a couple of sprigs here and pull off about half of the leaves or just kind of break them. I just like the way it looks when it's in there. It's still gonna permeate that oil. So I'm literally just waiting for the edges to just sort of start to simmer as I'm doing this. It'll go pretty quickly. We're not looking to cook, we're looking to infuse. You'll know it's done when it gets nice and fragrant. Similar when you add garlic and onion to like a saute pan and it's getting there, it's smelling really good already. So you can see it's starting to simmer a little bit. So I'm gonna cut the heat and then simply just pour it right on top of our olives. Make sure you get all of this flavor. Leave no speck of garlic or rosemary behind. Okay, now I'm gonna let this sit out at room temperature for a couple of hours. So every now and then, every time you pass it, just pick it up, give it a tossy turn, zhuzh it up, get those olives coated nice with that oil to help marinate it, and give those olives some time to steep. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. If there's one thing that I can eat for dinner every night, it's pork milanese, or any milanese. Chicken, anything, pound it thin, fry it crispy, I'm gonna eat it. I'd probably even enjoy shoe leather if it was fried. So right here I have, from my butcher, you can get these at most supermarkets, some nice, beautiful, thick pork loin chops that are boneless. I'm gonna pound them nice and thin so that every inch of this milanese is absurdly crispy. Get yourself a generous sized sheet of plastic wrap. And this is where the fun begins, guys. This may look a little scary, but I promise you it's not. We're going to butterfly these chops. So, I'm gonna place a chop on the plastic wrap, taking a really sharp chef knife. I'm going to find the center, and I'm gonna cut it open like a book. Work slowly, deliberate, steady, slices. And this is just to help get it nice and thin. And I'm just slowly going to start peeling it open. And there you go. If you skip this step and just start pounding, you're gonna be there all day and your meat's not gonna be as tender. So truly don't skip that step. Be sure to leave a little slack around so that our chop has room to grow. Get yourself one of these fun toys and go to town.
Watch your fingers. Don't do what I almost just did. There you have it. It's about a quarter of an inch thick, and we have a gorgeous big cutlet now that is for one person. Keep going. Did your kids or your boss piss you off today? This is the perfect meal to make at the end of the day. This one's even better. You can do this with chicken breast. I love it with chicken. You can do it with beef. If you don't have time to go to the gym, this is the perfect activity for you. what it feels like to exercise. <laughs> One to go. That looks great. As easy as that. I am going to wipe down, sanitize, clean my hands, and then we're going to dredge these guys up. Okay, now that that's set up, let's start getting these bad boys breaded. So, free them from the plastic wrap. Look how great that looks. Nice and thin. And when cooking, you wanna make sure you're seasoning in layers. You never wanna just finish with salt because it's just sitting on top and doesn't have time to absorb. Also, when cooking, you want to do all of one action at once. It keeps things neater, it's quicker. This is the bulk of the seasoning, so don't be cheap. And get both sides. The last one's always the annoying one, isn't it? Perfect. Now to begin breading. You may notice that there's something here missing, flour. Growing up, whenever my dad made chicken cutlets or milanese, he never used flour. And when I went to culinary school, I was like, "Where? What, what's with the flour? And I've tested it both ways. In this case, it is an extra ingredient, an extra step, and I find it to be completely unnecessary. It actually coats better to this pork if you don't use flour. So while you're probably thinking, I don't know what I'm talking about, I would curse here, but I'm not allowed to anymore. I definitely do. So this is my dredging station. Three very well beaten eggs and two cups of seasoned breadcrumb. Another trick, wet hand, dry hand. So in she goes. Make sure we're nice and well coated. You can see how great a pie dish works for this. It fits well, it has a flat enough surface and it has sides to keep everything in place. Give it a couple of shakes and right into our breadcrumb. Now, use your dry hand to start covering it with the breadcrumb. When you get to this point, you can flip it. Make sure you don't miss a millimeter of breadcrumb. Every crevice, breadcrumb and press it in. We want these to be well coated and super duper crispy. Just like that. And that's ready to be fried. Make sure you press it on, lock it in there. Isn't that cool?
It was kind of a fun thing to get the kids involved in too. Put them to work. Dinner was not for free at my house growing up. Thank God I did most of the cooking. My mom's cooking's atrocious. That's a big one. Time to fry them up. I've added about a quarter of an inch of vegetable oil to a pot. When frying, I like to use a neutral oil like safflower, canola, any vegetable oil, because it won't take on any flavor. Have this going over medium high heat. And I know it's ready when I add a pinch of breadcrumb and we get some sizzle action. So you see how it foamed up and it already started darkening? Time to add one of our cutlets. Mm. We're gonna let this fry for about two to three minutes per side until it's deep, golden, gorgeous brown. Keep an eye on the edges of your cutlet I can see it already starting to get nice and golden brown in that little nook, which means it's almost ready to flip. I'm gonna take a sneak peek. Almost there. For me, any cutlet should be on the brink of being burnt for it to be delicious. <laughs> Now just another couple of minutes. Oh yeah. Transfer it to a wire rack. If you put it on paper towels, it's gonna get a little soggy and the breading is gonna start to fall off. Get another one in really quick. And then while it's still hot, Add a nice, generous amount of a flaky sea salt. You can see it melting into that hot oil. Some of it won't melt. It'll add a little bit of an extra crunch and extra seasoning. These cutlets are gonna cook really quickly, so keep an eye on the pan. This is not the time to walk away and start another project. Oh my God. extra crispy for the chef. I have my oven set to the lowest setting. I'm gonna throw these in there to keep them warm. I don't wanna keep them in there too long though, just long enough to make a delicious salad. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, champion. So grateful. Is that close to crime? Here we go. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan.
Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. Right. We're going to do our part and get vaccinated live. A very special naturalization ceremony. This is a really inspiring group. Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! This peppery arugula is the base of my salad, but any good salad needs a killer dressing, and this is mine, my white balsamic dressing. Going to start by adding a couple of tablespoons of just plain old clover honey. This bougie thing looks like a lot of fun, but it's a little messy. This is gonna add just enough sweetness, some Dijon, which is gonna add more depth of flavor. It's also going to help emulsify this dressing when we add the oil. Get that all in there. A Little bit of salt, about a half a teaspoon. And then about an eighth of a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. Gonna whisk this to combine. Make sure you get that honey to dissolve. That looks beautiful. Now that the base of our dressing's ready, I'm going to drizzle in olive oil. Very slowly begin to drizzle in your olive oil, giving it time to break up the fat molecules and emulsify. If you can see the oil puddling in the vinegar, that means you're adding too much and it's going to not emulsify properly. I did not sign up for this much cardio today. You can see it already starting to thicken. That means that we have a great emulsification. It's a beautiful dressing. Great golden color from the white balsamic and this really good Sicilian olive oil. Mm, gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm, it's perfect. It doesn't need any more seasoning. This is a very simple salad. All I'm going to add to this arugula are some beautiful cherry tomatoes that I'm just gonna have. If you don't have a small utility knife like this, a nice serrated knife, it's a really great kitchen tool. I use it a lot. I'm gonna give this a quick toss. And then add your dressing to taste. This makes more than you need for this, but it stores really well in the fridge in a mason jar or just any sealed container for at least a week. Mm. So all set. All that's left to do is to put the two pieces of the puzzle together. Mm. It smells so good. Okay. These are nice and warm. Let's go with this big guy. Just throw that right onto a plate and then don't be cheap. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Then because God forbid I cook something and not put cheese on it. How delicious does this look? I cannot wait to dig in. I'm kind of thirsty. I think I need to make a cocktail. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of violence and persecution in their home countries.
The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. I'm going to show you how to make probably the most quintessential Italian aperitivo, which is a pre-meal drink, something meant to whet your appetite. And this bitter compati is going to do just that. That is one of the three major components in this Negroni. This drink is equal parts compati, sweet vermouth and gin, and it is going to punch you in the face. So I'm doing an ounce and a quarter each of these three spirits. This is our sweet vermouth to balance that bitterness just the slightest bit. And we can't forget about the gin. This is a London dry gin that I'm using. Then some blood orange. I like to peel it directly into my beaker to catch any oils that come out. And I'm just going to peel off a nice healthy strip. Add some ice. You wanna get this nice and chilled. It's also gonna dilute this the slightest bit. And stir, stir, stir. At least 20 seconds. Really let those flavors combine and let it chill throughout. Perfect. Get yourself some bougie ice. Mmm, so pretty. Then, every cocktail needs a garnish. Another strip of our blood orange skin. Give it a little twist. And then I kind of like to run it on the rim just to get those oils on there. Little extra hint and punch of the orange. Now, if you feel like this is a little too bitter for your palate, we're gonna make its less aggressive cousin, the Americano, which is pretty similar. We're gonna start the same way with our compati, using an ounce and a half this time. And then the sweet vermouth, no gin in this one. So it's not gonna be quite as boozy. Perfect, same thing. Stir, stir, stir. More bougie ice. <laughs> Isn't that such a beautiful color? Then, finally, we'll top it off with club soda. How beautiful that effervescence. Get about our little garnish. Our little straw. There you have it. The perfect Negroni and the Americano. Can't wait to share these with my friends. Here's a pretty color. Then a little twist. Thank you. You stir. I like dilutes it a little. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome. Delicious. Beautiful. Pork milanese. Nice. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome. Oh, seen Academy Award winning actress Jodie Foster on screen since 2018. Been too long. Too long, but now she's back. She's starring in a new film. It's called The Mauritanian, and it's based on the true story of a man detained at Guantanamo Bay for 14 years despite mm. never being formally charged. Our own Harry Smith recently caught up with Jodie. Harry, good morning. I hear you were enthralled by the film. Tell us about it. It's, you know what, it's one of those movies that on the surface you go, I'm not sure I want to yeah. watch this, but it is so inspirational. And when you see the how this guy is portrayed, it's really just amazing. But in talking to Jodie Foster, we talk about this movie based on the uh, book called the, Di the Guantanamo Diary. We also talk about the anniversary of the film we were just talking about, right? Silence of the Lambs. And we also talk about her connection to the Green Bay Packers. On the surface, a movie about an accused terrorist being detained at Guantanamo, Cuba, is not the escapist fare many of us are yearning for these days. It feels to me like we don't get to see you very often on screen. What, maybe five times in the last 10 years? What was it about this movie you said, I have to make this? Yeah, I decided I really just wanted to be in movies that I cared about, that I felt were really meaningful and that I just couldn't live without. Those only come up every once in a while. And plus I'm, you know, a lady over 50. And this one, I read it and immediately I was like, where do I sign? In The Mauritanian, Jodie Foster plays real life defense attorney, Nancy Hollander. The US government is holding upwards of 700 prisoners Guantanamo. Since when did we start locking people up without a trial in this country? Tahar Rahim plays Mohamedou Awul Salahi, a suspected terrorist held and tortured by the U.S. for 14 years without charges, a part Rahim would normally reject. It might be the first time that I read a script with universal values and not stereotypes. And it mm. was uh, great to see that finally it's, uh, it's appropriate to show uh, Middle Eastern people this way. Even though he's African. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I say Arab people. <laughs> For Salahi is a man who, against all odds, somehow does not lose hope, does not lose his soul. He hallucinates and says his mom, uh, yeah, it was the, the hardest day ever. I can do it only once, and I did it only once, and then I collapsed. Rahim's performance is spellbinding. Whatever I say, it doesn't matter. This f***ing island, I die here! Shailene Woodley, she plays my legal partner in the film. And we would just like look at each other and kind of like, do you believe this? I mean, it was just such a pleasure to watch that performance come out of him. Um, he's an extraordinary mm. actor. What is it like to know that you have the respect of one of our very, very best actresses? <laughs> it feels like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Award worthy, in fact. Both Rahim and Foster received Golden Globe nominations for their performances. Jodie Foster, Tahar Rahim, The Mauritanian. I, I jumped. I was very happy. I thought of my family, and I knew they would be proud. So, uh, and it's a beautiful recognition. I don't know who's weirder, you or me. Jodie Foster has a knack for achievement in films, like this one 30 years ago. Dr. Lecter, my name is Clarice Starling. The Silence of the Lambs. It was a perfect movie experience, a perfect shoot. We really did the best, we did the best work of our life and we're all scared that we'll never be that good again, you know? Who of us was not frightened out of our wits by Anthony Hopkins? What did you see, Clarice? What did you see? We had this sort of weird actor tension where we didn't talk to, we were too scared to talk to each other during the shoot. And then I remember the last day of shooting, I remember I was eating a tuna fish sandwich and he said, I was scared of you. And I said, I was scared of you. Like we were both scared of each other and we kind of threw our arms around each other and then became fast friends. Clarice. <laughs> <laughs>
Silence of the Lambs won everything. Yeah. You got an Oscar. Anthony Hopkins gets an Oscar. They were piled up all over the place. Yeah, five of the big awards. I think that's only been done once before by One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest. So it was a, it was some kind of a record of sorts. Which, of course, brings us to the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. So I'm watching his NFL MVP acceptance <laughs> speech. And he gives you a shout out. So I'd like to thank my team off the field, Jody Foster. What was that about? Well, I don't know. I have never met Aaron Rodgers. However, I am a huge Green Bay Packer fan. But does it have anything to do with the connection to Shaleen Woodley? It might. Yes, it might. Whatever Foster knows about the no longer secret engagement of Rodgers and Woodley, she's not saying. I have never met Aaron Rodgers. I hope to meet him. I will, um, but now that I'm a member of the team, I plan on, you know, being on, being at Lambeau with my cheese head on and, you know, making fool of myself. I have oh, painted yeah. my face. I have done that. Jody, I've, I've listened, lots of movies over lots of decades. Yes, we're like, <laughs> we're aging together. <laughs> <laughs> Except I'm aging and you're not. <laughs> Lovely. What a pleasure to speak with her. We just, it was a blast. It's like uh, old home week almost. She's delightful. Yeah, she's so really delightful. is. Just watch her talk for but, hours. But yeah. somehow, not, yeah. not unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Harry. Yeah. Uh, the, the movie is terrific, by the way, go, to go all the way back. And I don't know if we'll ever find crack. This is the Green Bay Packer's secret. Was she the intermediary or oh. who knows oh. what? Well, if anyone right. can crack it, it's yeah. you, Harry. That's right, Harry. Consider I got yourself, nowhere with it. Consider I got yourself zero. a sign. No. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, check it. Oh. So grateful. Is that close to crying? Here we go. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Are you ready? Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated Are cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> hey, now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. <laughs> Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Welcome back. Two of our favorite comedians, Billy Crystal and Tiffany Haddish, are out with a new movie. It's called Here Today, and Hoda, you got to spend some time with them. I did. Uh, two very funny people. Uh, Billy and Tiffany teamed up for a powerful film. It's about the beauty of friendship, marking the first time those two have ever worked together. I'm so glad I didn't tip my hair that color this morning. I thought about it. I thought I said, this is maybe Mother's Day. Maybe I'll do it for Mother's Day. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's no surprise that just after a few seconds, we were already laughing. Billy Crystal has been making his mark on the comedy world for years. Singers, I love you. Just a few years ago, Tiffany Haddish exploded onto the scene. <laughs> and then came her Saturday Night Live hosting gig in 2017. Oh, this is an amazing night. I'm so happy to be here. You may Their paths would soon cross. Billy, is it is? Do I have the story right? You're watching SNL like you do on Saturday nights, and on pops this amazing human being who like captivates you. I was blown away when she came on. I went, "Who is this?" And she was so great and funny and charming. And in the sketches, she was sensational. At the time, Crystal had been working on his film Here Today and needed a co-star. So, Tiffany. How did you learn that Billy Crystal had his eye on you and said, that's the girl I want for this role? My agent called me 
and was like, uh, Billy Crystal would like to talk to you. He would like to meet with you. And I was like, Billy Crystal wants to talk to me? Are you serious? In the film, Crystal stars as Charlie, a veteran comedy writer with a secret illness. He also co-wrote the screenplay and returned to the director's chair for the first time in 20 years. Haddish stars as Emma, a young singer who forms an unlikely friendship with Charlie after an unforgettable lunch. I mean, why is your face suddenly bigger than it was before? I cut from my lip. Oh my God, are you allergic to seafood? Oh, maybe I am. Dialed the nearest hospital. When I s learned about the beginning of this, I was like, well, that sounds like Tiffany to a T. But this movie, Tiffany, takes you down other beautiful roads. How did you feel about the rest? Because this is a very beautiful story, a very kind of heavy story. I felt really good about everything. And uh, the only thing I had an issue with is when Billy was asking me to cry. And I was like, uh, I've been spending 39 years of my life suppressing tears, uh, not crying in front of people. Uh, do you know how hard it was to train myself? to turn all t tears into jokes. Like, no, I want you to cry. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. And, and he got it out of me. What did you have to think about, Tiff, for that to happen? I actually just stayed in the moment, just listen. Yeah. And it was hard because I do it with my friends in real life, but to do it with the whole crew around and, mm. you know, and I'm just, I've been trained, I've trained myself to be like, when I'm feeling like busting out with the, you know, Viola Davis not tears, just, <laughs> Make a joke, do something, laugh, swallow those tears, like do something yes. to make it go away. And Billy was like, don't do it, wow. just be. Haddish knows a thing or two about real pain. She's been open about growing up in foster care and struggling during the early days of her career. But this past year, her comedy dreams came full circle when she got some exciting news while surrounded by a group of young girls. I've been nominated a couple of times for some things. But I just and won I a Grammy. Love, I just what? You just won a I'm Grammy. Just, I, just, I just won a Grammy? Living in that moment with you, Tiffany, are you still thinking about it right now? <laughs> I'm about to cry right now. <laughs> <laughs> Swallow, swallow, wait, no, let, I don't know what to do. Not only did you have that moment, Tiffany, those little girls really watching, was. you had it. And all I could think of was, you just made everything possible you know, in a nanosecond. A, I felt like, way. first of all, wow, I won this. Second, it was, wow, these young ladies are our future. And they just realized that they can do anything. Mm. And in any moment, they can be blessed with, with whatever they desire. And all I desired was to bring joy and happiness. That's it. It's all I've ever desired. And bring joy, happiness, wherever I go. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. 
What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, check it. Oh, so grateful. Is that close to prom? Here we go. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> and this new movie introducing us to the next generation of royalty played by rising stars Kiki Lane and Jermaine Fowler. I got to talk with them and Eddie about picking up this story three decades later. The first coming to America is a modern day fairy tale. And this movie is kind of like the, the fairy tale is interrupted. It's the long awaited return to the magical kingdom of Zamunda coming to America, bringing back Prince Aki, his wife Lisa, alongside a new generation. Children, this is your brother. Kiki Lane, who dazzled in films like If Beale Street Could Talk, joins them as their eldest daughter, Mika, and rising comedian, Jermaine Fowler, playing Akeem's long-lost son, LaBelle. Kiki and Jermaine, what did the original Coming to America mean to you? This is a movie that my family watches together all the time. And I mean, I wasn't around yet <laughs> when the first one came out, honestly. Um, so I probably watched it when I was a little too young to really know what was going on. But it's definitely something that brought my family together a lot. When I first saw it, I was like eight and nine. It was one of those movies that just stuck with me. Everything about it just stuck with me, especially the barbershop scenes. Eddie, how does that feel when you're here? You're working with folks who were either just around or just born or weren't born when the movie came out. I feel old. That's how I feel. My back just started hurting when he said that. <laughs> Your knees pop. <laughs> Tremaine, just one of the countless comedians inspired to pursue that dream after watching iconic Eddie Murphy films. It set a standard for like Hollywood. It was just missing so much in like the representation. And that movie just set such a standard and, and it still does to this day. So the movie means everything, man. And that's got to feel pretty good, Ed. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Especially when my talented is saying it. You know. <laughs> oh, man. That's yeah, good. Because talent, I had people that wasn't talented come over and say, hey, man, I got started all because of you. You <laughs> <laughs> know, me. Kiki, what was it like when you got the call that that you're going to be in coming to America? It blew my mind. It still blows my mind, honestly, just because I feel it's the first thing that I booked that my family has such a you know personal connection to. Eddie, you know, one of the things uh, that I thought was interesting about uh, this coming to America, there are a couple of really impressive action sequences. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like the one scene where uh, I kicked Arsenio, but I didn't realize how hard I kicked him. <laughs> and kind of put it in outtakes. And you know when I really realized how hard I kicked him was the next day when my foot was hurt. <laughs> <laughs> must have kicked him. <laughs> <laughs> to the younger actors, Murphy was more than just an on-screen father, but also a mentor for the art form of acting and comedy. Eddie's a master of this craft and even just what it means to work with someone who, you know, really spearheaded Black artists and creators getting on the other side of the table, you know, creating projects, producing projects. It's masterful, man, watching him in his zone, in his, it, it's beautiful to watch, man. I'd be putting on a hell of a show on the set, Al. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I come, sometime come on set, I'll be going, I'll be moving like this. <laughs> you don't know something get ready to happen. I got all kinds of moves, you know. When I know the young actors and actresses are watching, I might start doing some shit like this, you know. Mm. <laughs> watching, taking notes. Oh, that's yeah, she said, oh, shoulder. Oh, 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 yeah. He's cooking. He cooking now. Oh, he, he in it. School. He teaches school today. He ain't just acting. It's a master class. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just sit back and let them That's take it. over? I mean, literally, it wasn't an interview. It was just kind of watching this great conversation. And and in the movie, there's these great callbacks to the, the barbershop characters, mm -hmm. Randy Watson, a lot of cameos. Uh, Eddie's saying, this was really, and it is, it's a much more family-friendly uh, fairy tale sequel. Mm -hmm. The whole family can watch this. It is it's it is a joy to watch. Yeah. Well, I feel like standards were a little different 30 years ago for a, yeah, a well, family that, movie. That was an R-rated movie. This one is PG all yeah, way. awesome. Great interview, even though you didn't say much. Yeah, so. exactly. It's the best guy. <laughs> didn't need to.
Our next guest has starred in box office hits like The Fate of the Furious and Suicide Squad. And now Scott Eastwood is back on screen in the brand new Guy Ritchie film, Wrath of Man. Scott takes on the role of a dangerous character named Jan whose associates are up to no good. We're not the mafia. We're soldiers. Nah, some man right here. You trying to say something, John? John. Go find another bone to chew. You break your teeth on this one. And stand up when the boss is talking. Can't show you what happened after that. Yeah. Uh, Scott Eastwood, good morning to you, sir. Hi. Good, good morning. So you, you good got morning. This is this is wild, by the way. This whole FaceTiming live TV. We were just talking yes. about that. Um, although the ladies here think that your FaceTime shot looks just fine. It's just phenomenal. So. <laughs> That's sweet. Thank you. Secrets. <laughs> you got Guy Ritchie. You got Jason Statham. We got you, Scott. I know you can't give away any spoilers, but what, what can you actually tell us about the film? I can say in true Guy Ritchie fashion, uh, you're not going to know what's going to happen, and you're going to be surprised, and you're going to have a hell of a time. I like that. Oh, twist and toes. I like that. Yeah. It's just enough. <laughs> you know, when you go into a pure action movie like this, I, I know as an actor, you know, you prepare all you can for a role, but physically, I mean, what goes into it going into an action movie? Well, I'm already in shape. Are you you're trying to... <laughs> Trying to tell me something? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just. Yeah, dude, you're trying to yeah, tell me something. No, no, we see you're in shape. We see that. <laughs> now, you know, you, you just, you stay in shape. You know, if you stay in shape and you make it a, a lifestyle thing, then, then you're always ready. You know what? That's what I need to do. I just need to think about that. <laughs> like, it will be my lifestyle. <laughs> so, you know what? I thought it was so interesting. Uh, music superstar Post Maloney makes a special appearance in the film. How was that, having him on set? Uh, you know, he, it, was, it was really great. He is a, a total gentleman. Uh, and, you know, I never met him, a fan of his music, and uh, what, a, what a nice surprise having him be such a gentleman, so, so fun to work with. Cool. Of course, uh, your dad's quite the legendary actor and director, Clint Eastwood. We were wondering, Scott, d does he watch all of your movies? And if he does, does he watch like a typical dad and provide constructive <laughs> feedback? <laughs> Probably doesn't watch my movies. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, he's got bigger, bigger things to worry about. Uh, you know, like making the making those uh, movies for us to watch. So <laughs> I love uh, it. maybe he does. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he watches. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure. So we saw on your Instagram um, some DJing skills. Is this something you're you're hoping to get into? Where, where does DJ DJing fall in your future? Well, yeah, yeah, you know, this is uh, this is a second career for me. Uh, no, I just I just mess around. Um, yeah, it's fun, you know. It's a it's an, an, another artistic outlet, so it's it's fun. People love it. There was one where you captioned the photo "Best DJ Name Wins." We wanted to mm. look at some of the submissions. Have you picked a name yet? People are really getting into this. Uh, I haven't uh, picked a name. I actually don't. I don't read comments on the Instagram. Really? I started to send them out there and then just let it go. Know, forget it. Well, yeah. in some ways that's good because then you're not obsessed with the, the likes and all that. These are some of the ones that we saw and we enjoyed. DJ Scotty oh, wow. Slick, DJ E Dub, <laughs> DJ Scotty e Fly, DJ Swoop. Swood? Swood? What Swood. ladies, what would you what would you give him? DJ I'm what? Go, wait, can we put that screen yeah, up let's again? Put that back up. Yeah, if we put the screen up again, I'm gonna go with DJ DJ E Dub. No, no, no. DJ Scotty Fly. DJ I'll go with Scotty DJ Fly. Scotty Slick. One of those. I think, I like I I think we're, just, we're just going to go with Scott Eastwood. Here, Scott, Scott. Scotty. Scott, thank you. Thank Next you, time you come, you'll hey. have to share. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. We're going to do our part and get vaccinated live. A very special naturalization ceremony. This is a really inspiring group. Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, check. Yes. So grateful. Is that close to crime? Here we go. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, 
family vacations, family anything, for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. We're going to do our part and get vaccinated live. A very special naturalization ceremony. This is a really inspiring group. Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. When Tony Hale appears on your screen, you know you're probably going to crack up. He may be best known as Julia Louis-Dreyfus' personal assistant, Gary Walsh on Veep, which we've loved, followed that for five seasons. He spent uh, playing this neurotic... Uh, I don't know. He was just, he was, he was incredible. And then we also saw him, as you can see right here, on Arrested yes, Development. Yes, so much mm -hmm. fun. Now Tony's stepping into a leading role in the new movie, Eat Wheaties, about a very normal guy whose life falls apart when he misuses Facebook and accidentally stalks a famous college friend. I love that. Hi, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, guys. How's well, it going? I know you have a thing for Elizabeth Banks. I mean, that was, by the way, what a perfect plot. It's like you're just a kind of a guy who's minding his own business, thinking he's being sweet and yeah. kind. Yeah, he's a he's a, his name is Sid Straw. So I, I play this guy named Sid Straw. Well, this movie is an adaption of a book called The Locklear Letters, and it was by a guy named Michael Kuhn. But I play a guy named Sid Straw, who's a little bit isolated, sweet guy, but he's kind of a loner. I play I play a lot of those characters, I guess. Um, but he's not very social media savvy. He signs up to co-chair this reunion, and he has to get on social media, Facebook. Doesn't know what he's doing. He learns Elizabeth Banks. He he remembers Elizabeth Banks was his classmate, so he starts sending her these messages, and um, doesn't realize they're public messages. <laughs> And so he kind of starts to get labeled a uh, stalker. And just all of this is just kind of a huge surprise to him. But it's a it's a heartfelt com it's just a really sweet film and um I think it's a big lesson of you know, I think we look at social media as kind of the way to connect mm -hmm. when we miss all the real connections that are kind of right in front of us. You know, yeah. that we're just not paying attention to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such a good point. And mm -hmm. I, we talk about that, like how you can live here and yeah. like your phone yeah. or oh, your yeah. computer yeah. or you can pay attention to the world <laughs> yeah. around you. Yeah. Like, how does yeah. that play out in your life? Are mm -hmm. you on any of the social media platforms or you try to uh, shy I, away? I, I am. It scares me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's my I have a 15 year old daughter. She teaches me. Um, a lot about kind of how to use the thing, how to, the thing. <laughs> the thing. No, I sound like a <laughs> use that thing, that interweb. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, my daughter right she's there. So cute. Oh. Um, she's 15 now. <laughs> that's when it she was a baby. so fast. <laughs> so fast. But um, yeah, I, I, I will say I'm learning a lot. Um, the big thing is just the power of language, man. Like yeah. you got to be really careful with your words. And I think our society forgets that. You know, mm -hmm. words are very, very powerful, yeah. and we throw these words out for not realizing that they carry a lot of power. So yeah. I think it's, I got to be careful. You got to be careful when you send something out. Yeah, we all very do. Um, we're excited about this other project you've got cooking. It's called Being the Ricardos yes. with Nicole Kidman. Yeah. It's the Lucille Ball uh, uh, story, but tell us your role in this whole thing. Yeah, I play a, a guy named Jess Oppenheimer, who was, first of all, I am so, <laughs> I'm, I'm very thankful just to be working during this, during this yeah. season that we're all in. But um, by the way, your set looks so happy and I look like I'm in like a dungeon. <laughs> um, but um, I, uh, I, it's, uh, it's called Being in the Ricardos and uh, Nicole Kidman plays Lucille Ball and it's a week in the life of shooting I Love Lucy. And my character, Jess Oppenheimer, he is the uh, creator and the head writer wow. of the show. And Aaron Sorkin is directing it, and uh, Javier Bardem plays Desi. Stop it. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty intimidating. But I just feel I'm really grateful to be a part of it. I think everybody's looking so I forward can't to wait it. For that. Yeah. Okay. Well, are you into playing a little game that we like to call? Yes. Hail, Hail yes, yes or Hail No. <laughs> okay. I love that you guys said it together in unison. Well done. Uh, we're gonna read to you an activity, and then you tell us if it's a Hail Yes or a Hail No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to okay. say it over and over okay. again. Please would you, keep saying it. Would you jump out of an airplane? 
Oh, hell no. Good. Would you cold call no, Julia Louis-Dreyfus? Hell yes. Okay, do it right now. <laughs> okay. Well, keep in mind, it's 6.30, so she might not be very happy at 6.30 in the morning. Um, I like how you on. reached I, for your Wait, phone. he's going to do it? Yeah. Oh, are you on the phone? I you... was going to do it, but then I realized I'm FaceTiming you on my phone. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Sorry. Electronics. Okay, would you sing in the shower? Oh, hell yes. What do you sing? I mean, my, I, to, uh, what would I sing? Um, uh, I would probably sing this. What would I sing? Oh, crap. Now you put me on the spot. Um, maybe something from Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, I love I'll just, Dear Evan Hansen. That was such I, a I, I always, sad, it was such sad a beautiful, show, but beautiful, yes. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I can sound nothing like Ben Platt. Right. Nothing. But All I love right. that music. Well, we love you. Uh, Tony, thank you so much. You're going to want to listen to this. Yeah, we're talking about raising resilient girls who dare to dream big. And this woman right here, Janice Johnson Dias, says... It can change the world. She is. It's a professor of sociology at John Jay College and co-founder of the social action organization Grassroots. Janice devotes her life to learning how to raise optimistic, joy-filled girls, including her own daughter. We're fans of her, Marley. Yeah, Marley, as you guys know, is the founder of hashtag 1000 Black Girl Books Movement. And at 13, <laughs> she was the youngest person on the Forbes 30 <laughs> under 30 list. No biggie. Well, Here's the good news. Janice has put everything she knows into this book. It's called Parent Like It Matters, How to Raise Joyful Change-Making Girls. Proof is in the pudding, yes. Janice. You did it right. <laughs> She's right there. She's accomplished. But I think the, the main thing in the title of your book is joyful, yeah. raising joyful kids. I mean, that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. But is there, what's the first step to raising a joyful child? Well, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I think the first step is being joyful yourself. Yeah. Um, that you cannot raise a joyful change-making girl if you are not a joyful change-making parent. Um, and so a lot of what the work is about is about attending to who you are, what brings you joy, and how are you spending your time trying to make a difference in the world? If you model for your child this, then it is possible for your child to become this. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting and it's, you know, it reminds me of that time where Toni Morrison said, sometimes we're so caught up in the little things yeah. in our children that, you know, is their dress dirty? Right. Do we need to pick up their toys? And instead we don't look at them with delight in our eyes, which we all feel. Yeah. And so what did, did you do with your own family? to make sure that that joy is there? Well, I, you know, much of what I did was I attended to me first to make sure that I had what I needed so I could pour into her. And um, I tried not to manage her as much as yes. I tried to care for her. And I really think like that has been the thing is that yes, we have to manage their rooms, their schedules, etc. But we also have to make them feel like they're cared for and who they are um, matters, that we have to actually raise the child we have, not the child we wish we had. Mm, oh. And so for me, that has been the thing. I have had this little girl who is in a different world from me, and I wanted to be the person who could actually be there for her. So, you know, um, I always made sure she slept, that mm -hmm. she got 11 hours of sleep, um, especially when she was under 11. I made sure she didn't have TV in her room, um, that we really fostered her reading and her attention, and that sleep at time is for sleeping. I also made sure she read all the time um, and at least 20 minutes, and she read things she liked, yes. not things that I liked, and read at a level that was really fun for her. And I really surrounded her with safe people and in safe spaces so that she could always feel like she was good, not just outside, but inside. Mm. Um, so it has really been that kind of, these kind of six rules that have been the rules that guided our lives. Do you, you know what, I think we get tripped up when it comes to like, we want our kids to have good manners, but yes. we want them to be joyful. We want them to listen to us, but we want them to be free spirits, you know? And I sometimes feel like I get tripped up saying, no, we sit like this, we do this, because you don't want, you know, you want to make sure at least your child has those guardrails. How did you balance 
balance those two things together? So I think joyfulness is about two things. One, it is about having this kind of safety, but also having this opportunity to experiment. Mm. And so children need the quorum. We all need the quorum. We all need to be thoughtful and kind. But we also need this opportunity to explore. And especially for children who are black or brown, this is central. So for me, I really parent with humanity. I think about what I would want for myself. Right? What would I want to be? I want to be a person who can be expressive. I want to be a person who makes mistakes yes. and can recover. And I want her to see that. Mm -hmm. I want her to be that. So for me, that is the way I've gone about this work. Um, and it's a work that really centers me. I know that that's not exactly what people like to say about parenting, but like really who am I in the parenting that I'm given? Mm -hmm. And if I want humanity and grace, then I have to give that, her humanity and grace. I mean, yes. and Patience and all that comes with the hard, tedious part of parenting. If we want you here every day, Where's Marley? but we want Marley to come in. Is she, is she right there? Is Marley around? Girl, hey, hi, hi Marley. Marley. How are you? <laughs> Yeah. Marley, you are extraordinary. Yeah. We've talked about that a lot on this show. Talk about how your mom has helped you become you. Well, I think she's contributed so much to me. And, and one of the things that always stands out is that she's allowed me the space to make mistakes. She always says I can make a mistake once and then try not to make it again. That she opens up the space for my humanity and explains to me and shows me that I can be curious in my own right, oh. that I can explore the ideas of the people that have come before me, and that I can ask her questions and actually talk to her about things that matter to me. So it's treating me like I am, you know, I'm a young girl that's growing, but also like I'm a human being that's going to do weird things and going to do fun <laughs> things and want to learn more and embracing all of who I am and not expecting me to be a product of something else. Well, you're incredible. I mean, we should point out you're only 16 years old. You're the founder of this popular social movement, A Thousand Black Girl yeah. Books. Again, you're the youngest person on the Forbes 30 under 30 list at age 13. You did good. Thank you, you for hanging great. with us. We're so, you all made us feel so and Marley, good. Marley, can we just say, and, and um, mm -hmm. both of you, thank you so much for everything yeah. you do for yeah. books and for people that want to read, because we love it. Your yeah. work is really, really yeah. exceptional. And buy this book too. It's called mm -hmm. Parent Like It Matters. I know. I think we all want yeah. to. If you want to buy it, go to today.com slash shop. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. wants to raise successful, resilient kids, the kind who keep on going when the going gets tough. But if you're thinking, that may not be my kid, <laughs> our friend psychologist Michelle Borba, she says, think again. She says, resilient kids are made, they're not born. Yeah, and Michelle writes all about it in her new book, it's called Thrivers, the surprising reasons why some kids struggle and others shine. I mean, Michelle, first of all, we love all of your insight, and I like how we started it. Like, we want to raise kids who are gentle and kind, but we also want them to be kind of go-getters yeah. and not wallflowers who, who get pushed over by everybody. And I always feel like that's a hard balance to, to, to strike. 
Well, it seems like it's a hard balance. Actually, it's doable because when you look at the new science on resilience, it says kids need both of those. We've been priming our kids just for the GPA and the cognitive hype. And as a result, many of our kids are tanking. We're looking at just before the pandemic, guys, one in five kids was going to be diagnosed with a mental health disorder. They're the saddest, loneliest groups of kids. They're very loved, very educated. But let's just balance it because thrivers are made, not born. And we've got work to do because it's an uncertain world. OK, so what do we what can we do? Give us really practical guidelines to help our yeah. kids thrive. Number one, realize resilience is something that is doable. So if you put that into your agenda, we can do it. Second of all, look at it, because there's now we know seven strengths that matter most. They're not only going to help your kid in the classroom, they're going to help your kid in life. I just want you to reset your parenting and look at all of these as from birth to whenever they leave the house, this is your new agenda. Starting with confidence, just take a little bit more of a bird's eye view at what drives your kid and what makes him feel mm. joy. Those are his interests and thrivers actually have hobbies. But you look at all of those seven together, that is your long range plan for parenting. And now we can dig right in because Empathy, you just heard empathy. That's the we kind of a kid. Self-control, that's the one we need to hit right now. We can start helping our kids learn to identify their stress signs, go around the house and say, take that one, two breath, sweetie pie. Integrity, curiosity, perseverance, and then finally, optimism. Look at all those together. That's what's going to help our kids in school and in life. When you say resilience, I mean, resilience means your kid has to go through something without you rescuing them. They have to get through it themselves. And I think that that's one of those things. All the goodness in our, in our heart, we're trying to yeah, help them. But if we keep in mind one little mantra, never do for your child what your child can do for himself, you begin to step back because the commonality of resilient kids is they have agency. They have a sense of control over their own life. They've got a, I got this kind of a feeling. And the only way they're gonna get that is when they come stumbling in from home and they're crying, sit them down and say, what's the problem? So let's figure out how you can solve it. Brainstorm together. Because what we do know is those seven strengths are also made up of skills that are doable and teachable. They're gonna help your kid in the long range be happier and healthier. Yeah, so Michelle, we have some questions from you, yep. from kids. The first is from 13-year-old Connor. Take a listen. A few things that stress me and my friends out are how we do on grades. Because even if we study really hard and we don't get a good grade, we're scared what our parents might say. Scared oh, about grades, God. yeah. Well, I think the first thing off the top, Connor, is that the one thing that almost every kid told me that they worry about most is disappointing their parents. Yeah. So number one parent, resilient parents raise resilient kids. Let your kids know that you love them no matter what. Number two is make mistakes okay in your house because mistakes are how we learn. Now we're going to look at the mistake and say, what's the one little stumbler that got in your way? Mm -hmm. If we give children permission, actually what happens is they won't go hit the COVID wall and thinking they're so overwhelmed with it. The next thing you can do is redefine success to a child in your home. Yeah. Real success is a gain, G-A-I-N. Yesterday you were here, today you're here. Little steps along the way, that's what's gonna help you improve. And the final thing for Connor, and a lot of kids are telling me they're so overwhelmed with it all because their stress is mounting. So when they feel overwhelmed with a younger kid, you can say, I know that seems like a lot of work, but let's fold it and just do the first row. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. you did it, let's do the second row. Yeah, so you good. can chunk the task that's good. and tell your kid to do the hardest thing first. You won't stress, stress about it all night yeah, long. Yeah, it's so smart. Michelle, this Michelle, book is thank you. so powerful. To yeah. check out Michelle's book, Thrivers, head today.com slash shop. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Roll. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts.
I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. <laughs> for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. We are going to get some great advice for parents from a couple of experts. Yeah, Dave and Ann Wilson are marriage and parenting coaches, authors, and syndicated radio show hosts. The couple has three sons and six grandchildren. Their new book is called No Perfect Parents, Ditch Expectations, Embrace Reality, and Discover the One Secret That Will Change Your Parenting. All right, we all want to know the secret. We want to know all your tips. Dave and Ann, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, it's great to be with you guys, and uh, the secret is not that big a deal. We wanted to call the book Perfect Parents because we're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I am, Actually, too. You said, you said we were parenting experts, and I'm like, oh, are yeah. we? <laughs> All you need to do is ask our kids, our three sons. They actually wrote in the book what worked, what didn't work, That's and they'll great. be the first to tell you these are two imperfect parents. In fact, we all are imperfect parents. We're not raising perfect kids. And that's where we started to think, say, man, it's hard, it's wonderful, but it's difficult. Right. So tell us this one secret that will change your parenting, as mentioned in the book's title. And I mean, how, how does it relate to not being bound to a negative family legacy? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, the secret is a question that a lot of parents never ask. And we didn't ask it initially. And it's basically, what are you trying to raise? What do you hope your kids will be as adult men and women? Mm -hmm. And once you define that, we call it sort of the bullseye or what you're aiming at, your goal, uh, you can then work back from that and say, okay, if that's the goal, we're not talking about just raising successful or happy kids, which there's nothing wrong with that, but we're hoping there'll be men and women of integrity, of character. Mm -hmm. That changes the way you think about, okay, how do we raise them? Because that means bad things or hard things are not the worst thing in the world because that develops character. Mm -hmm. And you talk about this being more intentional, pushing beyond that simple, as Dave was saying, I just want them to be happy. I want them to be successful. But Dylan and I were talking about this. What does that mean? Does that mean you've got to lay out a specific, I want them to go to this school, I want them to have this career? Or is it more about you as a parent saying, this is what I want to provide for my child so that they can find their own bliss? I think for me, I think part of it too is figuring out who I am as a mom um, we decided to create this haven, a place of memories. And all of you know, like it's crazy in our world right now, especially for kids with the pandemic. They have more fear, anxiety, depression than ever before. And so Dave and I, as we are thinking, like, what do we want? What do we hope for our kids? We thought we want to create this haven in the midst of this chaotic world where they want to run. You know, they can't wait to get home because they know there's, that their parents are gonna see them, they're gonna celebrate who they are, they're gonna hear them. And so we thought, what does that look like for us? And even for other, uh, for readers, like who are you as a mom mm -hmm. or a dad? And, and I'll just add, Anne is full of joy and laughter. So she created a, a, an atmosphere of joy, mm -hmm. craziness at times. Um, and I think that's a magnet. It makes your kids want to come home, mm -hmm, especially yeah. in a world that's not not giving them. Oh, that. yeah. We mm -hmm. are playing pranks. We're throwing <laughs> ice on Dave in the shower. Oh, I love that. We are that. toilet papering our friends' houses. Yeah, you don't, Only our tell, friends. you don't have to tell them everything. Just read the book. It's all in there. <laughs> I did all that stuff with my brothers. I love I love that. One, one thing <laughs> I love that you guys point out is how important it is to make sure you put your marriage first. Why is that so important when it comes to parenting? Well, it's interesting. We Our last chapter, we just listed our top parenting mistakes, hoping that readers would read it and say, we don't want to make the same mistake. And one of, one of those mistakes was we almost lost our marriage. Our first mm -hmm. book, Vertical Marriage, talked mm -hmm. about that, but we almost lost it. And it's easy to do that when you're raising kids. You just get all your attention is focused on them. And you really have to build this. I came from a broken home of divorce and alcohol and adultery. And came before, and so we're trying to change that legacy. I mean, my legacy was amazing. My parents are amazing, 
but it is really easy to put all the focus on the kids. Right. And sometimes you like your kids more than your spouse. <laughs> she, li she likes her boys more than me. Trust me, it's still happening. But, but really the greatest gift you can give your kids is to love each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so important. Yeah. Great, great advice. Dave and Ann Wilson, I wish we could pick your brain a little bit longer, but just make sure you pick up the book. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Looking at a question that parents deal with, when is it okay to leave a child at home? Now, mm -hmm. you guys went out for dinner yeah, I, I was for a your little, birthday. I was a little nervous, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Kaina's about to be 12. Right. Um, and we knew we were going down the street, so he was like, Mom, just... We're so fine. you were in nearby proximity. Oh, yeah. And they all have, you know, technology to call us. So, but I was a little nervous. And so every, like, five minutes, <laughs> I would text them. And they're like, Mom, we're fine. So <laughs> I didn't tell my husband this. So we're at my surprise party. And we're at this big table. And my son, I said, I keep calling him my youngest son, boy twin, FaceTimes me. And I put the phone in my Aww. lap. And so he was just doing what he does in his room. And I, but I had it. So you're just him. watching him? We were just together, yet not. Oh, how long did that last? Until he fell asleep. Oh, wow. Okay. And then I came home and he was in my bed. So, I mean, you Aww, know, so I missed look, you. I think everybody's kids are different. Yeah. You've got to gauge. Like some states have actually a, a, a law. law. Mm -hmm. Is 12 okay? Old, Am I going to get in trouble? I know, I don't think so. Okay. But, I, you know, I got to tell you, when I was 12, yeah. and I was, like I said, mm -hmm. the oldest, I mean, my parents would go Friday nights. I always look forward to it. My parents would go out to get mm -hmm. to Alan Izzy'd get dressed up. The refrigerator was stocked, and it was party night. Oh, <laughs> so what did you do? I we remember. Would, we'd make all kinds of stuff. I love pop, it. Popcorn. It was great. That's, that's awesome. Great. That's just fun. And, and that's a, that's a well, you'll see. Yeah. Freedom. A, a game changer. Yeah. Well, I, I, I went downstairs to go pick up pizza that we ordered so they don't bring it to your door anymore. Mm -hmm. And Calvin said, it's fine. I'm fine. So I take Oliver, and I go downstairs to get pizza. But then I started talking to somebody. So I was about... Four minutes. I come back, Calvin's pacing. He's like, <laughs> and then as soon as I come in, he just comes right into me and just starts crying. He's like, I didn't know you'd be gone for so oh, long. I wasn't oh. sure you were coming back. I'm like, okay. Four, Not time yet. Four is too soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was only it was oh, four minutes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. don't call, okay? Oh, no, I mean, don't call. All right. Fine. For parents. All right. What happens? I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. <laughs> for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated Are cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Yay. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> Hey now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. This pandemic has changed our lives in so many ways. One change you might not even think about unless you're living it is how it's impacting couples expecting babies. One person who is living it, our Gotti Schwartz. He and his wife, Kimmy, who's a reporter at our Los Angeles affiliate there, KNBC, they're expecting, and we could not be happier for them. Gotti, good morning. Congratulations Congrats. again, buddy. Hey guys, good morning. We are so absolutely thrilled. I got to tell you, I've never been more nervous about something in my life. Obviously, Kimmy, my wife, she's doing all the heavy lifting, but trying to learn everything about being a first time parent during a pandemic has been a journey. So we've been keeping this video diary to show our daughter one day. And we've also assembled a, a team of pandemic dads to be to get all the advice we can as we navigate these uncharted waters. Take a look. Today is, today is the day that we found out that you're coming. We're gonna love you so, so, so much. Nine months, here we go. Just like that, our universe changed in the middle of a lockdown 
that made the rest of the world feel so far away. First it was the ultrasounds, where COVID protocols meant no husbands allowed. So he can't come in, so I gotta leave him. What are you gonna do? Sit here and stress. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Love you, wish you could come. And now we wait and cross our fingers and hope for some updates. Whoa! You answer the phone? Yeah. Wish you were here. Me too. And even things like parenting classes, well, they're also virtual. But for new dads to be, admitting how much we don't know and reaching out for help doesn't really come naturally. Due July 13th, having a baby boy. We are due June 23rd and having a baby girl. Nice. We got summer babies coming. So to help out, we gathered a few expecting papas for a little socially distant support group at the city of Santa Monica's Annenberg Community Beach House. Nobody feels totally prepared to be a dad, you know, but you've got it. Like, it's baked into your DNA to be a dad. Not being able to go to the doctor's office, I mean, that, for me, that's one of the hardest parts. She goes in, can't be there. I know she's scared, right? I'm, I'm worried, but trying not to be worried. Being there and being supportive is huge. Even if the pregnancy is healthy and everything's going fine, there's a lot going on. And being there to hold their hand, to talk them through it, is an important role that we have as fathers and we're missing that opportunity right now. I mean, FaceTime is FaceTime. It's not, it's not like the real thing, you know? Okay, we're getting ready for the exam and Gotti is on my FaceTime over Hello. here. And then all of a sudden, like the image, flashes on and that was like the moment that everything just changed and I, I would have done anything to have been like inside that room with her and, and, and holding her hand because it, it's a miracle what you see on that screen you know what do you think that that you guys could do better during this pandemic more laundry <laughs> <laughs> all kidding aside I would probably say being more loving caring and just kind of softer around how she is feeling and what she's going through. During these uncertain times, like there's a lot of sometimes irrational thoughts, emotions that come about, but it's important to recognize that those are valid, that you know shouldn't be judging those feelings or necessarily pushing them aside. When your kids are having kids, what are you gonna tell them about love in the time of the pandemic? I think that while there is so much negativity surrounding this moment, I think that it is a transformative time for the world. And they're at the very beginning of it. We'll look back and say, okay, this is literally the day the world stopped. Everything did stop, but we kept living, all right? And it brought us all together, closer together, and that's why you're here. I really do like the idea that when the world stopped, <laughs> we kept going. Kept going. You know, yeah. we kept going. And in all of this darkness and all of this, this gloom and difficulty, like there was this beautiful little light that happened to our life. <laughs> and one silver lining in all of this for the dads to be is uh, that we've gotten a lot more quality time with our wives during lockdown. Yeah. Even that means we got it too. <laughs> he gets to be home to feel the kicks and all the good things that are <laughs> happening, even if it's not in the doctor's office, we still get to be together so much of the time. So yeah. it's been good. Now, now Craig, Al, I, I gotta ask, not only are you both uh, amazing parents, but you're both married to way smarter women who also <laughs> work in this crazy world of TV. So uh, what's your advice for us? Uh, I will tell you both hey. that uh, it's the greatest thing that oh. could ever happened to you. And that you will know that your heart beats outside your body to somebody else's. And no matter what happens, <laughs> these are always your children. It doesn't matter what you do, uh -huh. whether it's your, whatever your job is, your job is just making sure that each of these children, whoever they are, can be whoever they want to be. I would, I would just say ditto uh, to that, uh, Mr. Schwartz. Kimmy, so good to see you. We're so happy, so happy for the two of you. Hey, hey by the way, Kimmy, I, there, there should be a, uh, a special delivery there for, for, for the both of you. I've and, been waiting. And baby Hold girl on. Schwartz. She's been very I've good. I've been waiting Hold to on, open. Let's see. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this has been hiding behind our couch this whole time. <laughs> no and the Today Show that. fam is treating us very well. <laughs> <gasps> yes. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this we've is got, awesome. We've got the full Today Show oh. library. There you go. Oh, there you perfect. Go. You're going to have so much reading material to go through. <laughs> In that oh, basket. You guys are the best. In that Thank basket, you. you will find all 14 books that Al Roker has written. <laughs> They're all in that basket <laughs> for baby girl shorts. Uh, oh, I can't They're wait. all in here. Oh, my gosh. She's going to love it. Thank you guys it. so, so much. God Thank bless you. you both. <laughs>
wherever you get your podcasts. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. We're back at 8.14 with a Today exclusive. Roz Brewer may not be a household name. Well, not yet, but she's a powerful force in the business world. Yes, she is. As a corporate executive, a lot of folks say she has a Midas touch. She was recently named CEO of Walgreens Boots Alliance, one of just two black women leading Fortune 500 companies, and you went one-on-one -on -one with her. Yeah, she was really a delight. From the moment Roz Brewer first set foot in a boardroom, she wasn't just satisfied being there. She is determined to change the way the game is played and who gets a chance at bat. She is totally an innovative approach to leadership, and the bottom line reveals that Brewer is also very good for business. Sometimes we use our voices by saying, we belong here. Get used to us. As a leader in her first company, sales grew to more than a billion dollars. It was forward thinking. When Roz Brewer took the reins at her next Sam's Club, she modernized the business and boosted profits. Then she stepped in as COO of Starbucks and overhauled the way they treat their customers. But all that... Brewer will be headed to Walgreens and will become its CEO. And was just a warm up. You're joining Walgreens in the middle of a pandemic. That's a lot of pressure. This wasn't like an easy entry. Not at all. But this came to me and I said, this is a time for me to step into something that I've always wanted to do. And that's to have impact, make change happen, lead something that would leave an impression on people's lives. And as I've seen people, you know, get their first shot, and they look back at our pharmacists and they are crying and in tears. I know I've made the right decision. At 59, Roz Brewer is a wife, mother of two, and now the CEO of the largest company ever run by a black woman. Have you ever been told that you actually have advanced because of your race? I have had several similar comments to that, as if I'm a token. I have had that. Um, I've had the comments uh, that, you know, you're not as smart as you think you are. I've had a lot of those, um, Hoda. I refer often to a situation where I was at a meeting just for CEOs. And I had one gentleman ask me constantly, what did I do for a living? Almost like, why are you here, right? He must have asked me 20 questions like marketing, like sales, like, was like, no. It was so funny because I happened to be the keynote speaker for the private luncheon. I assumed my uh, position in, on the stage and I just saw his face just totally drain. I feel as if I'm gonna teach a couple of lessons, you know, through this and I'm gonna be my best. That drive was instilled at an early age. Brewer grew up in Detroit, the youngest of five kids. Her parents worked the assembly line at General Motors. Your parents didn't go to college, but they wanted to make sure that all their kids did. How did they make that clear to you that that was the plan? Absolutely, it was from day one. It was not, there was no other option. You know, my dad worked three jobs, but for every event that I had in my life, he was always there. And I remember one event, where I thought I was gonna get, you know, the 
gold ribbon, and I ended up getting an honorable mention. And I remember feeling guilty because I was like, he left work early, one of the three jobs, and all I got was an honorable mention. And it broke my heart, but he was so proud. Things that happened in these buildings. And Brewer studied chemistry here at the prestigious Spelman College, forging a lifelong connection to the institution and a mission to pay it forward. So it's your mom, your dad, and Spelman. Absolutely. My mom, my dad, and Spelman College. Brewer's father, who beamed even at the honorable mentions, wouldn't live to see his daughter earn that diploma. He died six weeks before graduation. How often do you think about what he would be thinking of you, like in this moment, maybe? Oh, my God. I um, <clears throat> clearly know he would be quite excited. He, he would be. Um, I think about that a lot. In the face of daunting odds, Spellman women persevere. The first black woman is a phrase that most often precedes her name, but for Brewer, that just means she has more work to do. Well, what did they do? What did they do? In 2018, a Starbucks manager called the police after two black males sat without ordering. Brewer, the company's COO, sprang into action. You dove into that one head first because to you, it was personal. It was very personal. I saw these two young men and what really struck me was they were the same exact age as my son, John. This could have happened to him. Wow. What'd your son say? Well, he texts me right away because, you know, this hit black social media before it hit any anywhere else. Wow. And he texts me, he said, Mom, you have to get after this right away. We had a very constructive meeting. Starbucks did something you don't hear very often. They said they were sorry. And within a month, closed 8,000 stores for racial bias training. What might have been a public relations disaster became Brewer's triumph. It does seem like you were put in these positions and situations. And do you believe that there's some divinity here? You know, I do think it is because I'm not on that mission. You know, I'm somebody's mom, I'm somebody's wife, and I'm somebody's leader. But I'm not that activist. So I feel like this is divine order. The world is before you, and you need not take it or leave it as it is. Make it different than when you came in. That is my guiding compass. To that end, when will she feel her work is done? Likely never. Likely never. You know, I see so many ills that still, you know, need energy and need a voice, and I hope that I can still be that person to make change happen. I really hope so. Wow. I mean, wow. weirdly, if I weren't working here, I kind of wanted to work at, at Walgreens. <laughs> I, mean, I, just Ross Brewer. Loved, I just loved her whole vibe. She started off as a scientist. And I said, how do you be, how does science and business work? She said, in science, you analyze data and you make de quick decisions. Yeah. So she learned that decision making. And the other cool thing she said is, when she hires people, she asks them a question. She says, you're at your kid's soccer game and yeah. I call you. She said, what do you say? And so, most people say, I put the phone down and I go run to you. And she said, she goes, no, no, no. She said, a happy employee is a productive one. Mm. She said, you say, I'll call you in 30 minutes and I'm good with that. She told me, my daughter won regionals in her track meet on Friday. On Monday, I came to work and I had a, a skip in my step. She said, I want happy people working here. And I was like, wow. that is wow. awesome. Ross so Brewer. Hope our bosses are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Ross Brewer, that was great. Good morning, welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Ready actors. An indie horror film. 
a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Roll. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Getting a cancer diagnosis is life-changing for anybody, but for many women, the hair loss that goes with that can be incredibly devastating. Yeah, after her own personal battle with cancer and hair loss, Diane Austin was on a mission to help women with textured hair look and feel like themselves when they needed it the most. Here's her story. It was like everything stopped. I I was in shock. The words, you have breast cancer, forever changed Diane Austin's life. You just don't think that that's going to be your story. That's going to be your diagnosis. But it became Diane's story in June of 2015. Two months later, she started chemotherapy. Depending on your treatment, you not only lose the hair on your head, but you'll lose your eyebrows, you lose your eyelashes. It was just so important to literally look as much like myself as possible. To do that, she needed a wig that matched her own hairstyle. I started looking for these coily curly wigs and could not find them anywhere. To go to cancer center after cancer center and not be able to find these wig styles that look like my kinky, coily hair, it was first shocking and then very frustrating. And to be quite honest, I, I was a bit angry as well. So Diane took that anger and took action with her sister Pamela Shattuck right by her side. She was in the middle, still in the middle of chemo treatment when she had this light bulb moment and, you know, and I was on board. Ethnically inspired wig styles are not readily available at hospitals, cancer centers across the country. So our mission is to just level the playing field. After four years of research, Coils to Locks officially launched in May 2019. Statistics say one in three black women will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime, and they're wearing their hair in its natural, kinky, uh, coily, curly state. The need was great. Now their wigs are being offered in half a dozen hospitals across the country, including Boston's Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, as well as the Images Oncology Boutique, part of Massachusetts General Hospital, also in Boston. It's unbelievable the reward you get when you put a wig on somebody and you just see their face light up. Manager Kathleen Bazazi has helped countless women over a 26-year career find the right wig. But in 2016, she faced her own battle with breast cancer. I think I've just understood the patient better and what they were going through and what their needs were and how much hair does make a difference. Kathleen has been in remission for nearly five years and is continuing to help women find their perfect wig. Now with the added option of coils to locks. It's so nice to give uh, patients a choice of what style, what colors they want, and they don't have to settle on something that they, they didn't like. The wig line offers 12 different styles, each in three colors. Our plan is to get our wigs in every single hospital. And our tagline is actually more than just a wig. We want to uplift all women, but particularly uh, black women who are going through this journey in all the ways that we can. Diane is currently in remission. Her full-time focus now is growing coils to locks and giving other women with cancer hope. You're more than just your diagnosis. You can put one foot in front of the other and keep going. <laughs> we are so happy because with us now are the co-founders of Coils to Locks, Diane Austin and Pamela Shattuck, these awesome sisters. Diane, I feel like when people are at 
their lowest. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people go through things. You know, sometimes they think about themselves only. Mm -hmm. You know, they get stuck. But you didn't. Yeah. You thought about you and everybody else that could benefit from this incredible organization. Tell me how you did that. How did you channel that anger into something so beautiful? Well, I, I recognized um, prior to even starting the concept or thinking about a business that this wasn't just my problem, that there had to be other women like me who had this problem. And that prompted me to start um, moving outside of the Boston area where where I'm located. And I started calling hospitals across the country just to see if that you know, idea that this was just not a singular problem was true. And and the more hospital cancer centers that I called and, you know, the more no's that I got when I asked if they had these coily, curly, highly textured wigs, the more I just recognized that this is a problem bigger than myself. And quite frankly, I said to myself, well, Diane, stop complaining, do something about mm, it, well, because I was doing a lot of complaining. I think, well, I... I think that's a <laughs> I think that's a that's an excellent excellent point. And what I was also thinking was like in the middle of a cancer diagnosis and treatment, you don't need one more thing to worry about. Yeah. You just don't need one more thing, just the pressure. And Pamela, just tell us what it's like because to, to be able to see someone put that wig on is beyond what I think anyone can totally understand unless you've been the one. So just explain what it's like when you watch women get fitted with one of these wigs. Well, you know, in a world where uh, black women are embracing their natural hair and its natural state, we knew that, you know, again, like Diane said, that this was going to be uh, something that was needed and wanted across the board. So it's really exciting to see women, you know, we get emails and calls all the time with women just um, so excited that these wigs are even available. Um, and so excited to to receive them. So it's just a beautiful thing. And and coils to locks. Yeah, yeah. you know, I yeah. Diane, the, this is a new business. It's yeah. sort of in its infancy. And I wonder, um, you know, what the fact that it's in. Oh, I think I, we said a dozen I, yeah, or half, half a dozen. dozen. Like it needs to be everywhere. Yeah. And um, we. I guess we lost your sister. <laughs> She'll be back. But um, what? <laughs> How, what's your mission to grow? What, what do you, what do you, how do you see you, yourself growing? We absolutely see our coil to locks wigs. That's our vision in every cancer center boutique yeah. across the country yeah. and then outside of the U.S., quite frankly. We're very interested in expanding globally. So we know from, as Pamela stated, that women are contacting coil to locks we get emails mm -hmm. constantly saying, we want access to your wigs. Can I buy them directly from you? So our goal is to move from the, the, the six hospitals and one medical salon that we have now. We're actually in conversation with um, several hospitals as we speak, and we you know, hope to continue to well, you're to gonna, grow. You're gonna, so you're, you're, you are going to grow, Diane. Yeah. You're going to grow, and we have something we want to let yeah, you know we about. Have a, we have a surprise for you, so you'll have to call Pamela. Maybe she's watching. <laughs> Thanks to Poise Brand, they are giving coils to locks $10,000 to help fund wigs for women in need. Po Poise wants to make sure that to support you and all that do the amazing work you do to help women yeah. feel like themselves. So we hope that we hope that helps. And we also hope getting out the word helps because yes. that's important too. And we wish you such good luck. We, we just appreciate you. Thank you so much, Diane. Thank you. And, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and, you. and thanks. Thank Pamela, thanks, Pamela. for us. <laughs> these wigs should be everywhere. So we hope yeah. that is what happens. And we'll be back right after this. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen.
Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. A huge lift is underway for one of the most celebrated cities in this country, Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. This is the greatest location in the nation. <laughs> We're having a baby. Wow. The big reveal is under the lid. <laughs> hey, now. Things are looking brighter, so we want to help you find the fun in 21. <laughs> Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Eartha Kitt was an entertainment icon who could make a simple purr memorable. Mm. Though she died 13 years ago, her legend lives on through her daughter. And now her daughter is shining a light on her mother's life in a whole new way. The Eartha Kitt that the world saw had this sort of regal presence and commanded a stage. And the Eartha Kitt who lived at home truly was real and grounded. Kit Shapiro's memories of her mother fill the pages in Eartha and Kit, a daughter's love story in black and white. Why write the book now? I had to have my voice heard and I had to keep her voice sounding. The late icon first found fame overseas in the 50s, then Eartha's stardom captivated audiences here for nearly six decades, whether through song with her hit Santa Baby, Santa Baby, or on the small screen as a groundbreaking Catwoman, oh. and even with films like 1992's Boomerang opposite Eddie Murphy, <laughs> never ceasing to entertain. But the Emmy winner and Tony and Grammy nominee who sang in several languages and was once called the most exciting woman in the world started as Eartha May. She would always say, I am just a cotton picker from the South. Literally. Literally. Abandoned by her mother in South Carolina, not knowing about her father beyond an assumption that he was white, young Eartha was left with a family that wasn't her own. She was treated so poorly. She was referred to as a yellow gal. And she really had a struggle with finding her own identity. Often ostracized because of her mixed race, life didn't get better until her teens when she toured with a prestigious dance troupe, getting an offer to sing solo at a Paris nightclub. And there crafted her now legendary persona. I've always gotten the impression that she sort of prided herself to a certain extent on transcending race. Why was that so important to her? She felt that boxes keep you apart. She didn't understand why it was necessary for her to be categorized as a jazz artist or a gospel artist because she was black. She said, I'm an artist. What difference does it make? It was something that she fought her entire life being categorized. Eartha divorced Kit's father, a veteran turned accountant, before she was three. Despite the demands of juggling a career in motherhood, Eartha would tuck her daughter in almost every night. She was always a mother first. What do you think she was proudest of? Me. She was proudest of me. And I don't say that in an egotistical way. I truly realize the incredible mother that she was. I don't want it to sound like this was Nirvana. I mean, I would roll my eyes just like every other teenager when she would sing and, you know, when my friends would show up and she was incredibly strict. And that's not always easy when you're an only child of a single parent. Kit also writes of Eartha as an activist. At the height of the Vietnam War, she attended a luncheon hosted by Lady Bird Johnson. Kit says her mother respectfully spoke up, noting that youth were rebelling in part as pushback against the draft. And she asked President Lyndon Johnson about the challenges for working parents. There was the incident in 1968. Eartha Kitt's invited to the White House. She addresses the First Lady about young people of color in this country and what they're experiencing and how they're feeling. And she spoke her truth. And I got the sense from reading that part of the book that that was something that to a certain extent may have haunted her. Well, it haunted her because of the repercussions of her speaking her truth. Kitt says her mother lost engagements but bounced back because she was a survivor. After working in Europe for 10 years, she returned home and carried on. She was able to work for her entire life, right up until before she died. Kit was by her mother's side when at the age of 81, she died on Christmas Day, 2008. We were meant to be this connected mother-daughter team. 
And I remember as a little girl saying, you know, God picked me to be your daughter for a reason. And I was the perfect fit for her. Eartha Kitt died from colon cancer, so Kitt uh, advocates for screenings and early diagnosis through the Colorectal Cancer Alliance, an organization that I recently joined as a board member. And you can see more of my conversation with Kitt on today.com. Mm. Really enjoyed so it. so good. Yeah, really thank a you. I learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. I learned a lot. Yeah. Thank you. No, that you don't oh, know. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I look, can't believe they're here. A big hello, you guys. Thank you for watching today all day. Uh, we hope you had a great weekend. It was a hot one, we know, but mm -hmm. we are so glad you're here with us Monday morning. Now, this is Today in 30. We mm -hmm. think you know what to do. Yeah. Just sit there. This is what we, you yeah. sit and this is what we do. We give you a mix of